like I'm pulling up the tabs on my other computer. Yeah, I mean, I really don't know how this is like I'm using this. Well, if we weren't using, if we weren't using a Zoom, we'd all be able to see them. But um, the problem is, is that reshare or whatever is kind of laggy. Well, I don't know what else. I mean, I don't know if you can just, well, if we did zoom directly to Facebook, then that would work, but we're live now. There's like nine people watching on Facebook so far. So there's people that will be trickling in. I mean, when me and Steve did this the other night, it was like, yeah, I'm pulling up all the different working. I don't know why I have so many videos up. I mean, it's live. I should be able to comment. It should. So hopefully you can see us. Apparently my internet is not great. Um, I don't know how to pull this up. I'm in like 40 different studios here. Oh, there you are. Oh, okay. Perfect. Mixie's live right now. Even hard is here. Jordan is here. Can you guys see us? I don't know why I can't. All I'm seeing, I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm just going to roll with this. You Carlos on uh, Twitch says, yay, we're live. Oh, Doolin is here. It's working. Okay. It's working. <laughs> we're Very just nice. rolling with that. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to put my Zoom window so I can see you guys and talk to you, my band. Um, and then just be like, Hey, it's working. Jordan, Jordan is letting me know that you can see all four of us and we're all coming through. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Um, this was supposed to be the pre-order party, but apparently the <laughs> pre-order is not a thing. So <laughs> apparently we, <laughs> that's, that's the party. <laughs> okay so here's the deal um okay i'm trying to keep this pg-13 here so i don't think that matters do you okay know? well oh, I, I i went on tunecore that we used to distribute all our music i did the same as we always do it and i'm that like triple check person because i get really scared that I'm gonna upload the wrong song or like an unmixed old version. So I'm always like, when I'm checking the title name and then everything, and I went through, I selected all the stores, I selected everything and they had the pre-order thing. And I, I set it up, they had it recommended. They're like, we recommend you start pre-orders on the 16th. I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. I'll pick a time like 6 a.m., cool, whatever. I select it and I go to check out. And it's like you pay an extra 10 bucks for that thing. And so we, I know I paid more money than we normally do. And there's no link. And I emailed them and I was like, so what's the deal? Where's the link? And they just said, well, it looks to us like you didn't set up pre-order. And I was like, but I did. And they're like, but to be honest, I mean, is there really a point to pre-ordering a digital single? Like, it's not like. It was only going to be 69 cents. I know. All right. 69. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody out there? I just want to say some hellos because I can, I can see the chat. Um, so Bella, Todd, Carlos, Rodrigo, C Craig, um, Tinker Hell. How you doing? Girl? Tinker Hell. I love it. <laughs> I, she hit me up the other day and was like, can I use my music and your Twitch streams? And I was like, hell yeah, you can. So uh, welcome. We, yeah, this is our very first Twitch stream and we're, we're broadcasting to Facebook, YouTube and Twitch at the same time. And I'm just excited that it's happening. Like it worked, it's happening. All four of us are here. We're broadcasting live. People all over the world are tuning in. Comment, tell us where you guys are from, where you're watching from. We have Pablo from Argentina who's watching. Uh, we have Peyton, we miss you so much. Um, comments are just like coming in, so. Whoa, this guy. Um, and the Facebook group named Jordan Stevens says <laughs> that Josh is such a hunk. 
Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> I'm blushing. Oh, okay. William <laughs> says, okay, her first stream was yesterday, but she chickened out. Okay, that was a test. That was not supposed to go live. But when you zoom into Restream or Streamlabs or whatever you're trying to use, it like automatic, like it just was like, okay, we're going live. And today we figured out it was because I had all the streaming services like toggled. And if you, if I hadn't have had those activated, then it wouldn't have gone live. It would just be live to like us. Um, so yeah. Hi to Cameron in Texas. Um, Steve still in Indiana, Dave in New Hampshire, lava master in New York, sending good vibes. Hey, -o. all right. <laughs> um, this is awesome. This is awesome. There's like so many comments. You got people from a lot of Brazil. Uh, actually, I was like looking at statistics and Brazil's like one of our top um, countries or demographics, like people who stream our music at big portions in Brazil. So we love you in awesome. Brazil. And um, Danny. <laughs> It's uh, it's actually uh, obrigado. Obrigado. There you go, Javi. Portuguese. Portuguese. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> That's face, man. Um, oh, yeah. And then we have Danny. I already said Danny from Mexico. Douglas from Kentucky. Um, Kelsey from the UK sending love and safety. Thank you so much. Um, we got some Nashville and Kentucky over there on uh, YouTube. Yeah. So this is awesome. People from all over the place. We love you guys so much. We thank you for tuning in. Um, any questions for us, shoot them out. We'll, we'll be answering um, your questions. And um, I was going to do a giveaway for anyone who pre-ordered the single today. <laughs> yeah, Steve. Uh, so now everybody wins. <laughs> so I can't make this many paintings. I can't, no. Um. <laughs> I think Steve might be the new Josh. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Thank you. Why would you say such a cruel thing about me? <laughs> it's an honor, Steve. <laughs> um, so I, I think this is a question for Josh. It says, what's your vocal range in octaves? <laughs> oh. Well, oh, can Josh sing? <laughs> Oh, by the way, there's, we got um, somebody from Tampa, Tampa, Florida. Yay, represent. Uh, TJ, well, I mean, you're not technically from, I mean, you're from Tampa, but not from, from. I'm from Tampa. Hey, Meg, thanks for tuning in. Meg's one of my best friends ever, and she lives in Orlando. Um, I went to college in Florida. That's normally what I tell people. It's just easier that way. Um, my parents still live there. Uh, and uh, also I wanted to give a shout out everybody watching on Twitch. We're, um, not completely new to Twitch, but I'm super excited that there's people on there that are streaming. We definitely want to stream games in the future and like get more onto this. This is definitely like our first real stream. So thank you guys. Um, here is a question. What are your favorite songs you wrote and performed and why? So fire, fire away guys. Should we like go in a circle on these or something? I think I think how we're laid out is different on everybody's screen. So TJ, you just call out a name and uh, Javi, what's your favorite song that we wrote and your favorite song to perform? Uh, favorite song that y'all wrote would probably be in the morning. I feel like it's a personal song That's and it resonates. And then live, probably revenge. It's just got the most balls. <laughs> <laughs> and Javi pointed it out when we were in the studio that it was like Stone Cold's theme song. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Wait, what did you guys? What did I just miss? I'm laughing at one of the comments. You remember Javi pointing out that when we were writing Revenge, that it was the Stone Cold. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> intro. Well, some, some people like have noticed that. I feel like at least when we released it, people were like on YouTube being like, dot, 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 stone cold. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Dave Cat says ho ho is Rhode Island and he's next. To, he meant to say how and it's like <laughs> correct me, I'm sorry. I'm hoeing in Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> not no, not how. Um oh um oh, William said I was on my way to Tampa and blew up the engine in my car on the way. Listen, let me tell you a quick story before we move on to Josh. We'll have Josh answer the favorite song question. Um, I used to drive a 95 Dodge Neon and my engine blew up on the middle of the Howard Franklin Bridge. And if you're from Tampa, you know where that is. And it was fucking awful. Like I blew a hole in my engine. I was a kid. I didn't know I had to put oil in it. <laughs> and it was a piece of junk car anyway. And so on the very, on the very top of the Howard Franklin, there was me like 19 year old me, just like, what do I do? My car just stopped. So damn, I mean, and Tampa is notorious for like horrible traffic and all that. So it couldn't be fun to be broke down in Tampa. So we are wishing you all the best with that situation. So, um, Josh, what do you think of the, yeah, I would say, uh, frequencies is probably personally my favorite yes. song i just I, yes. I, yes I would say uh yeah just the it's cool has some weird things going on in it it's uh fun to play i also really i mean live i would say uh my ways just because of the energy it's really fun to play yeah you look really cool when you when you play drums in that song josh <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Josh, Josh needs to be an anime character. <laughs> That's my dream, actually. Josh is an anime character. <laughs> yes, I am an anime you character. Do the Naruto run. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I've been watching Naruto. <laughs> when everyone was like we're gonna go naruto run straight to area 51 and like people <laughs> actually showed up to do that shit remember when life was like that like just happy yeah and that was right people, uh <laughs> people had to look forward to was like storming area 51 to find the aliens <laughs> <laughs> there was a bunch of at the halloween parties i went to there was a bunch of narutos and anime characters that's awesome i'm jealous you're not you're not supposed to be going to halloween party steve yeah steve oh. we're, a mask. we're in a pandemic hey we're not going to talk about the pandemic though we're all no. <laughs> shit. all right so steve answer the question he was so red <laughs> i know i don't it's like i don't know if it's the light it looks like i have a hickey or something like, <laughs> like why is it so you're, red? Like, Maybe. you're redder than usually usual right here yeah <laughs> like um, you're blushing or something i just want to shout i just want to shout out michael kane from pennsylvania old band open for you guys at the champ in lemoyne pennsylvania one of our favorite venues that uh, i i don't think it's there anymore i remember they were having some struggles but um, Michael, what band was it? Uh, what was the name of that? Sincerely Yours? That was, I'm still friends with Kaylee on uh, Facebook. So I, I'm guessing you were in that band. Um, uh, Steve, do you want to answer the song question? Because we got like a bunt, ton of more questions. Coming. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I hate these questions. They give me so much anxiety. It's like having to choose your favorite child. <laughs> oh, so to anyone who doesn't know, Steve does primarily write most of the songs, you know, so it's harder, I think, for him than the rest of us. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, I guess it depends on my mood. Um, currently, my favorite song is as good as it gets just because I love how, like, I don't know, instrumental and different and emotional it is. You know, it gives me all the feels and the goosebumps. Uh, that's actually a TJ song. We barely did anything on that song. Um, you said as good as it gets? Yeah. Why? And then, I don't know, I guess to play would be either I uh, like playing My Evil's Ways. Um, that's a very me song, I guess. A very you song. That's the solo, right? Yeah. It's a good oh, one. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we don't even need a lead guitar player anymore. <laughs> sounded, sounded like a local commercial over here. <laughs> Tennessee. Right. 
Listen, <laughs> I, why can't I see you guys on Zoom anymore? I'm afraid if I hit any buttons that, oh, there we are. Okay. I was like, ah, I'm afraid if I hit any buttons, everything's going to go away. Um, I clicked away. I did something. Um, so Michael Caine was from that band Weedy Assembly. Do you guys remember playing with them? I mean, it was a long time ago. Was Josh or Javi were you? Did you guys play at the Champ with us in Pennsylvania? We played the Champ a few times. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> like, um, yeah, I remember a few times. Um, oh no, M Michael says he showed Javier his nipple. So that sounds. Oh, cool. so, Javi, you, you had a very intimate. I have his every show, so I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds like a good people time. Not showing Javi. <laughs> his oh. Nipple. Michael but uh, Baptista is in Narragansett, Rhode Island. Sorry, that's like right near me. I live in Bristol, so hello. Ooh. Hello, Rhode Islander. Um, uh, and he's also the poster at the Palladium within this moment. I can't tell you how many nipples I saw on tour. I'm just going to throw that in there. <laughs> oh, Terrence, did Steven write Factor Friction? No. No, I did not. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Basically, the good songs. Well, no, we wrote. edit it. No, all the like sad <clears throat> songs I wrote. All the like, all the like riffy, exciting songs Steve wrote. All the like sad, brooding songs. All I the wrote. daddy issues songs. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh, what's uh, your favorite song, TJ? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you gotta answer the question oh i'm gonna say i said is probably the favorite my favorite song i've written um That's a good and, one. you know it's just got a long history for me and now that we've been we've been a band for like eight something years i mean clearly i wrote that song like 10 plus years ago and you know i just it's just a, i love it i just love it you know it's i think it's just a good, it reminds me also of a good time in my life when I was writing it. You know, I was hanging out at the coffee shops, playing my little gigs, with my Tampa friends. We used to play at this place called Sacred Grounds. I think it's still there. And then we used to play at the Pegasus Lounge all the time. You guys remember that place? Or Steve? Horny Oki. Horny Oki. Every Wednesday. They still probably fucking do it. And that old dude is still probably running it. Like, yeah, I hope so. I hope he's still running it. Let's put it that way, because I would go there in a heartbeat. Like I, I ran into some people from who lived in Tampa briefly and I forget where I was, but we were reminiscing and they were, we were like, you remember the castle, uh, you know, and you remember That's the castle, the, That's the Senator, favorite. the Senator with his little jock strap and Batman, Batman used to show up at all the bars every weekend and and then the homeless, okay. Can we have a quick story time? <laughs> no, well, yeah, only if somebody well, else can tell it. <laughs> so wait, quick, we, this, 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 listen, Tampa we, story time. We, we can have a quick story time, but Steve does not do quick. <laughs> yeah, normally, but this one's gonna be quick, I promise. So you remember the masquerade, right? So that was like the biggest venue in Ybor City. Yeah. And so anytime there was a big show, you always had to like wrap, the line would wrap around the building. Yeah. Well, there's some notorious homeless dudes in Ebor that were there the whole time I was there. One played saxophone and he only played Christmas songs all year round. Didn't matter what month it was, he knew like four Christmas songs. But my favorite was there's this homeless guy that had a harmonica and he would like walk up and down the where everybody's lined up with his hand out trying to get money playing his harmonica, but his version of playing the harmonica was just holding it to his mouth and breathing in and out. So he'd be like, eh, 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 just like walking up the, with his hand out. It, it's like, dude, you're not even playing a song. Like, why would I give you money? He's just breathing into a harmonica. <laughs> I would have given him money just for that. You sound like Darth Vader with a kazoo. <laughs> that's that's our new band description <laughs> darth vader with a kazoo sounds like <laughs> darth vader with a kazoo um okay so we got some good questions i'm gonna try to keep up with some of these also uh we got a shout out from jay gregory for wearing the sad spaceman shirt so 
Yeah. Nice. Hobby. It's like my three shirts that I wear regularly. <laughs> <laughs> Should I go change into mine right now? Hey, we missed you. We're back. Uh, book us some shows as soon as we can play in Nashville again. Um, somebody also, Michael was like, why or not? Sorry, I'm mixing up my people. Uh, no, there, no, Michael from Rhode Island is like, how come you don't play? Well, there's a pandemic right now. And no, <laughs> there's a pandemic. No, I, yeah. You know, I, I played like one solo gig in, um, and cause I have my solo song, I have my solo like thing kind of going on and, um, my Patreon, I post my demos and stuff and I played like a solo gig and on piano at, um, shit, where was that alchemy? And anyway, so, but the band really hasn't made its way up there. We, we haven't toured in a few years. We haven't done a lot and you know, you guys know, we kind of took a little bit of a break. So now we're back and like, we'll definitely be playing Rhode Island maybe well, what was the the live i don't think we ever got to your live favorite live song oh my favorite live song um i like i like doing in the morning live i do the this nice. solo the guitar solo is my favorite guitar solo that you've ever written steve which one <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's Which one? no I, there's a comment in the youtube thing that just threw me off today you just start reading down and you'll see what just like what just happened yeah what just took away my attention there <laughs> oh he seems to know you oh. shout out Shout out to, uh, shout out to Peter. Thank you for, <laughs> right. thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, you guys are so awesome. I'm seeing a lot of, uh, we got Dan Gorbea, um, a lot of old familiar OG nearly dead fans. You guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and we, we apologize to anyone who did not tune in in the very beginning. Uh, the pre-order did is not happening. So if you can't, and a lot, most people were like, I can't pre-order. I don't use iTunes. It's, it's fine. Just stream it when it comes out, watch it on YouTube. That's fine. <laughs> it's, it's oh, okay. he was talking to you, but somebody pointed out earlier that for some reason, oh. my name, my name is on your, it is because, oh, it's because you're because logged into our account. account. Yeah. yeah. And I set up the account. Yeah. That's why. So you're Stephen. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe that it, that's, well, y'all know I'm not Steve and Toby, so, you know. <laughs> A real fan would know. Um. Okay, so favorite moments from touring. I was going to ask you guys this too, because I'm kind of curious, because I was going back through, I was, if y'all follow me on Instagram, you know, I had a trip down memory lane last night. <laughs> I was posting all these old ads. I, I sent something to all of you guys, all three of you. I was like, I miss this. I miss you. <laughs> Let's do this again. Um, so favorite touring memories. I mean, from now on, I think my favorite tour memory is going to be the fact that I met Jordan, my husband to be, so I get, I'm lucky that I get to be like, oh yeah, that tour we did with them, <laughs> <laughs> you know, traveling around when we toured with the lives of breeze and going to LA and DC and just slicing and just getting to see stuff together, getting to know each other. And then, you know, years later, here we are getting married. Pretty exciting. That's my favorite tour memory. One of many. What that's about funny. You? That's Josh's favorite tour memory. That's maybe. really weird. Yeah. I just stole my answer. <laughs> 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 no, I would, uh, for me, uh, personally, I think on the In This Moment tour, when we played Pittsburgh, Stage AE was like a moment for me. Um, but that also was- going to the Redwoods was cool. <laughs> That's yeah. definitely one of my top tour memories. And I specifically remember that was the Olives of Breeze tour, but it was a breeze it did not want to go to the Redwoods with us. And they missed it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they didn't do Damn it. shame. Yeah. I, we, we obviously we love them. Obviously we love them, right? We're friends with them and they're now not there. It lives. A breeze is no longer. They are now a band called Damnation, And Jordan is in, our shadows and um, the graying out here in New England. And uh, 
but I'll be honest with you guys. They never wanted to do shit on tour. Like we always wanted to go out and about sightsee, do shit in new cities. And they would just like hang out in their van the whole tour, like no shade to you guys, but they didn't like to like go out and do shit. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) it's going to sound bad because, you know, we're in a band, we're supposed to enjoy playing music, which obviously I do, but part of my, or one of my favorite things touring is actually seeing the different cities and like doing the sightseeing stuff on our like days off or in between shows. I just, you know, I, I love traveling. I love seeing different cultures, exploring the world. And so like touring's just, uh, it's almost like, oh, I get to travel and play music. So it's like, you know, when we went to Seattle and like got to explore around or in Chicago, went to the top of that building and had overpriced drinks looking over the city and stuff you know like that kind of stuff is band bonding time you know it's fun we make a point to do band bonding shit on tour we should uh we should do it for our for our next tour we should just travel the country as a band and not play you just go talk to people <laughs> yeah just go visit yeah. listen what if we what if we like put out a book or a comic book or something and then went on a book tour that yeah, would, yeah, that'd be fun. By the way, Javi got uh, Daniel Gorbia. He commented and said, "Josh, Toby, TJ, all exclamations heart." I don't see Javi in there. I guess he's not excited. Damn it, Javi! Damn it. <laughs> That's Damn it. okay. I I actually keep I actually keep up with uh, Daniel Gorbia like a lot. <laughs> he keeps up with me. <laughs> he's I cool. believe you. Uh, Josh, Pablo <laughs> wants you to talk more. Yeah. Uh, he's saying he's talk, Josh. No, you <laughs> haven't answered. No, he did answer the question. He answered the yeah. question. We all answered the question. No? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the next question is from Betty Bat. She goes, You guys are my favorite band ever. And here is a question What's the hardest part of recording a song? Good question. Not messing up. Well, yeah, as a drummer, yeah. yeah. I feel like recording is probably the hardest for Josh. Don't you guys agree? It's uh yeah. Yeah, I it's, say that's it's safe a little bit <laughs> it's a little bit more difficult to punch in drum <clears throat> because like a guitar, you can um if you screw up a part, you can go right before that part and they can just hit record as you're playing right there and and so it's easier to edit, but drums, not only is it more difficult, but it's like a more physical instrument. And so because cymbals ring out, you can't just like replace a section, like a little spot because the cymbal ringing behind the other drums will like sound weird. So Josh, if he screws up, he has to replay like an entire part or an entire section or the whole song. So like, Josh is there like by the end of the day he's just sweating and dying and just not really because I never actually mess up. I, I sweating get it from and the dying. first take every time so oh yeah I forgot about that <laughs> but yeah no it's definitely it's uh you gotta go through many passes recording drums because yeah like Steve said you can't really punch in and out too well so yeah. I would uh I would argue that vocals are the hardest and so I give I give mad respect to TJ because it's like it because like a guitar you can tune and a keyboard you can it's you know but the vocals if your if your voice is not like working that day you're kind of fucked. <laughs> you just have to push it to the limit and just be hoarse. I mean yeah. that's a good point though. I don't really think about that because it's really taxing. Like singing all day is really a lot on your voice and trying to make it perfect and line up like we do doubles and harmonies and you have to like line up your consonants and i i enjoy doing it though so i don't think it's actually difficult i mean i guess for me the most difficult part of recording is like the waiting in between because you can like sing it and then have to wait for like them to like kind of you know edit it together like layer it and then i don't know that's always the most boring part i don't know Cause I, I look at what you guys do and I'm like, that's way harder. Like I just sing. And it's, if it's a song that we've sang a lot of times before, it's like, not, it's like not that hard. I don't know. It's like uh, sing it a couple times and we're good. Like, I don't need to sing it a lot. 
which is what I like about recording with Brian because he never had me sing it like over and over and over and over again. Like some producers have you do that, but some producers are like, Hey, you know, we're good. We have it. Rest your voice. Yeah. It's, it's kind of tough. Like if you're, if you're trying to sync everything up and line it up, like on guitar, um, it kind of takes the life out. And I do enjoy working with Brian because I think he would let me play through and he would edit it, but it wouldn't be like, like, Perfect. so lined up like perfect and it was it was it's hard to it's hard to duplicate those takes it's it's easier to play the whole thing like all at once um yeah and technology's made it easier for sure like it's nice having you know the programs like axe effects and whatnot where you have like every single tone possible at your fingertips and you just have to select what you want and make sure your guitar's in tune because I remember the earlier albums we recorded it was grueling kind of finding guitar tones because you'd have to have all the speakers set up and I mean if the mic is placed you know half an inch in a different spot on the cone it sounds different you know so it'd just be like hours of like messing with dials moving mics like trying to like find tones and just going back and forth and back and forth and your guitar is going out of tune halfway through so we'd spend half a day finding guitar tones which can be fun if you're like experimenting but if it's just like I literally just want to distort a tone and it's taking you know an hour to make it sound good that can be kind of frustrating where it's nice now with like the emulations and stuff that it's just like, I want to have a good sounding box tone with some reverb and you just click, click, there it is, tune up and do it. That's not, it's not pure, Steve. That's cheating. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. We <laughs> record on tape, Steve. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, you're still playing it. It's like, what does it matter if it like, comes from a microchip versus a tube like <laughs> awkward silence <laughs> <laughs> i mean all the drums are drum machine anyway so like what is that? <laughs> that is yeah. all right well next uh, hopefully next stream i'll be able to show <clears throat> I know that like anybody's watching. So we have people tuning in from YouTube, from Facebook. So I just want to say hello. Hello, Jamie or Jaime. Hello, Manu, Pablo, uh, hola. So everybody who's like shouting out, there's a lot of comments coming in. Um, hopefully next time we do a stream, there is a, I know there's a way that I can get everyone to see everything. So like, um, and I'll try to my best to be like, okay, this is, you know, Daniel on YouTube and the, mad magi from youtube um somebody had asked me oh pablo i love the band evanescence i do i mean i really do um obviously being a pianist it's a big they were a big influence back in the day you know when they first came out with bring me to life i was like wow this can be done like and then my immortal and i was like wow this is really cool like piano and rock together um but hopefully next time like i don't know i think you guys are just seeing this the four of us. I don't think people are seeing like the four of us and like the comments stream. I don't know what, I have no idea what it looks like on Twitch. This is all very new for us. So we appreciate you guys being here and bearing with us, all of our lovely, beautiful zombies from all over the world. Um, <laughs> we really appreciate you guys. Ooh, Angel says Whitney Houston versus Madonna, who is a better singer and had a bigger impact. I mean, I'm going to say Whitney Houston. I'm sorry, Madonna. I love you so much, but Whitney Houston is like, I would sing Whitney Houston songs, like just trying to be as good of a singer, you know, and like belting it out and wailing it out, singing along to uh, her song. So good question from Angel. What I think, you yeah, it depends on like Whitney, I think is the more powerhouse vocalist where Madonna had more of a statement as far as like attitude and style and stuff. Um, I saw uh, there was a couple of questions on here, kind of like, um, that we could go around in a circle. Someone was asking 
um, if we had any dream bands that we wanted to play with that we haven't already. So like bands we haven't toured with, who would we want to tour with? Um, oh, I guess I should say who asked that. That was Todd on Facebook. And then we can kind of do them together. But um, Jamie asked any dream locations we want to play. So like maybe if we want to go around and say like Ooh. a dream band to tour with and then like a dream country or venue, I guess location could be country or venue or whatever. All right, Javi, start. Well, uh, I mean, of course, my my old answer is going to be uh, obviously Blink 182, but I would I kind of want to update it a little bit. So I'm going to throw in some new names. Um, I'd actually really like to, uh, to see what, like, it would be on tour with, like, Dua Lipa. Like, that would be crazy. Ooh. And then, um, I love her. Somebody that I think I could probably learn a lot from would be, there's, I don't know if y'all are familiar with this, uh, artist, but, uh, his name is Tom McDonald. I've been kind of listening to some of his stuff and he's an independent artist and he's, uh, He's just like killing it right now. He's he's kind of controversial. He's not for everybody, but uh, I feel like being around that guy I could probably learn something. So next, did you say, you say the location or? Oh, location. I would say venue or like country. I think um, I think Madison Square Garden would be cool. It's okay. it's kind of. It's kind of, you know, like a, a must do, I guess in like every musician's bucket list or whatever, but. That's awesome, Javi. Cause I thought you didn't want to like play anymore. <laughs> oh, I don't, but I'm answering the question. <laughs> oh, I, I don't. <laughs> remember, remember, remember like two months ago when we were all just like, should we start doing shit again? And I was like, well, I miss touring. And, and Javi was like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man, it's i'm way it's, throwing you under the bus man it's okay i mean you know touring is cool but it's like i don't know i think personally i think and maybe i don't know if we all felt it but like it was almost like you know you have to have like a bigger goal it's like if we're touring for like this huge you know growth then it then it's awesome and it makes sense. But I think I think we were at a point in time, you know, on tour where we were having those questions about should we should we keep playing live and pop, you know, this and that. And so it was just kind of it was it was it was taking its toll and it was really rough. So yeah, yeah I would do it again, but you know, I think uh, I think having a really big goal would be essential, you know. Yeah, we, we definitely got to work our way back up too. And over the years, I think when we first started touring, it was almost like there was more people. And and then towards the end, there was like less people. So I don't know if it has to do with venues closing or less people coming to shows or the fact that like we have a worldwide fan base that's worldwide. Doesn't mean they're all in whatever city and random city in Georgia that we happen to be in that day. Um, it's like for bands to everybody who's watching, it's, it's always like, is it, more like back in the nineties or whatever, you know, you used to tour and play and that's how people found out who you were now with the internet and Spotify and YouTube and everything, like people all over the world can discover us. So what's going to get us more fans and what's going to get more people to hear our music, you know, doing stuff like this and, um, connecting with you guys online or like actually playing shows. I mean, we, we love playing shows. I don't, that's not going away, but it's going to be a little bit more selective. I think in the future, it's not going to be just like these blanket long tours. It's going to be like a few cities, you know? Yeah. It's, it's just so crazy to, to like take a step back and see what like presently what the musical landscape is. It's just like, it's weird, especially with yeah. COVID, like, now everybody's doing streaming and all this and everyone's doing live streams and Foo Fighters just did one that was cool. There's a, there's a movie. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I think it's, I know it's directed by Martin Scorsese, but I, I'm not sure the title. I think it's called Hugo, but the story essentially is about this guy that used to make movies. He was directing movies 
and he was like this huge success. And then all of a sudden a war came to the country and he had to sell all of his cameras and all of his movies just to, to make money. And so now he was making like toys and stuff. It's a kid's movie, but it's, it's really crazy. And it kind of goes to show the way, like we, where we are today, it's like the music was huge and vibrant. And now, you know, we're, we're kind of brought down to this ground level and it's, it's just crazy. It's deep hobby. So I was, a, you know, it was a cool movie. No, I, I, I did see it go. It's been like years and years though. I'd have to revisit it. What's the movie? I miss Hugo. Hugo. I think it's called Hugo. Oh. It's about a to- it's about a toy maker, and uh, that was like a, a big deal when it came out. I think it won yeah. a few Oscars, honestly. Yeah, because it was very uh, the visual effects were awesome, yeah. and it's Martin Scorsese, and it just the parallel to where we are today is just it's crazy. Like, yeah, I think it's still on Netflix. I don't know if they took it off or not, but. By the way, we had two different people, uh, Jamie on Facebook and uh, uh, ECI on uh, YouTube ask if we would ever open for Coheed and Cambria. And that would be a definite yes. I would love to tour with that band. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that question, it's like, thinking about that question, I try to think of it like on a, I don't know if business is the right word, but like, so if I, if we were going to tour some, someone that it would make sense to tour with, because I have a pretty eclectic taste. I mean, the band always says I listen to boring music on tour and stuff. And <laughs> so I like all kinds of weird stuff. And I have like right now I'm listening to a ton of trip hop and stuff. But so that wouldn't make sense for us to tour with those kind of artists. But so if I were going to pick someone like I want to tour with Billy, Billy talent. That's what I want to do. Like, well, and then recently I saw some 41, that would be like a fun package, like us, Billy talent and some 41. Um, and then as far as location, just overseas in general, we have so many overseas <laughs> fans and right. we only played the United States. So it would be nice to just get in what there. If- <laughs> What if it was a dive bar in uh, South America? Dude, I'll take it. I'll, <laughs> I'll it's if we get Somebody booked. Somebody will be there. Somebody will play the less. The, like, well, if we get booked in an outhouse in Australia, I'll go play it just just to go to Australia. You know, you're like, we have quite a few fans out there. Yeah. Gosh, how about you? Gosh. Um, let's see. Oh my God, Kobe Son is just texting Josh, 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 everybody. Josh, do you guys know Kirby? Yeah. Oh yeah. What's up, Kirby? Kirby, Curbs. <laughs> wow. Why is the band name escaping me? They wore. It's. The, the, they're from. Can- well, we played Kansas City. They had a, they had a guitar. The guitar. Yeah. They played Warp Tour. They had the spacesuits. Damn it. No, but nobody help her. Nobody help her. We did a whole tour with them. <laughs> Would y'all, yeah, we did a whole tour with them. Mm-hmm. I right. think we played the champ too with them. I know Josh, the, I know one of the guys' Josh, name uh, is uh Mark Man, Mike Mike Monroe, isn't it? Monroe. Yeah. 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 Remember it's something like streams, streams. <laughs> No, I'm trying to give him. Don't say anything. Don't don't say anything, Kirby, because we will remember it. It's like I I know it. I'm just, it I know it. I'm just not gonna tell. Please, and they did the thing where they took a picture and acted like they were. <laughs> yeah, TJ. Here's here's your hint. Like they were getting hit. TJ. Kirby says streams, Kevin still owes me twenty dollars. <laughs> streams. That was a lot of people. Maryland. Streams, Maryland. That's a good hint. Man. Streams, Maryland. Creeks, Maryland. Rivers Monroe. Oh yeah, there you go. Rivers Monroe. <laughs> Holy shit! Wow. I don't know when you were like, oh, the guy's name is Mike Monroe. I was like, duh. 
that that rings a bell. Why? Anyway. <laughs> he, um, Kirby said Kevin stills a, a was of $20. $20 hashtag oh, never forget. I, I saw that hashtag never forget. And I was like, dude, Kevin knows a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, Kevin he's knows in, everybody. He <laughs> definitely <laughs> owes me 20 <laughs> He's in Washington now. So, he's been talking to me. It's crazy. Yeah. That's well, awesome. Up and moved. Doing good. Yeah. That's awesome. So That's it was tough rivers. State to move to. They're pretty much on lockdown, more severe than anybody. Mike oh Monroe, God. Kirby Son, Doc was the other one. Was the drummer? Yeah, yeah. The yeah drummer yeah. was Kevin, wasn't it? Yeah, Kevin was the drummer. Didn't they call him Doc? Oh no, yeah, that's right, Kevin. Doc was a guitar player. Crazy. <laughs> Yeah, Good that times. was fun. That was that was a long time ago. Um, did everybody wait? Josh never answered the question. Yeah, question. <laughs> yeah he was cut off by TJ. <laughs> okay, we already know Blink Twenty Two. No, like, no, uh, I'm for... not gonna. I'm gonna pull Javi, and <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> Angels and Airwaves. Angels and Airwaves. <laughs> Angels and Airwaves. <laughs> yeah, I'll say Angels and Airwaves, and like. Events sevenfold. I feel like we could fit in both of those kind of things. We got frequencies for angels and airwaves, and then we got some heavier stuff for Avenged. I think that would be cool. Then uh, Avenged would Avenged would be awesome. That would be, that would be pretty that's awesome. definitely a dream. Um, probably Wembley. <laughs> that would be a cool place to play. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. <laughs> Here, I'm going to pull up a sample of who we need to tour with here. Is you guys talk, the talk amongst yourselves. So. Um, am I the only one who never answered the question? Yes. Yeah. So I um, I did an interview with this um, with this guy, Nick, the other night. I don't know if any of you guys watched it. Um, the link is like on Facebook and stuff like that. It was really fun, actually. It's my first interview I've done in a while. And um, we kind of determined that the offspring would be like one of my dream tours. Um, I love punk. They're influence of mine. We've done some covers and I think that we would go really well with a band like the offspring or rise against was one that he was talking about. Um, but one, also a bunch of people are asking like all what our favorite bands are. Um, one of my favorite bands is garbage and another one is the distillers. So being on tour with those two amazing women would be incredible um, and I just, I really want to go tour in Europe. I think it would be really fun just meeting new fans in the UK and Germany and all over Europe. I think that would be a lot of fun. So it's hard to pick a country because then I feel like I'm leaving somebody out, you know, and it's like, well, no, we, we want to tour in too. all of the countries. You guys just got to keep spreading the word about us where you're from. So we, we have enough people that would come to a show and see us. <laughs> um, but Let's all be real. This is this is who we really want to tour with. Is it Vitus? Yes. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> oh no. Remember when I used to torture you on on drives? <laughs> like it'd be late at night and Oh yeah, you'd be drunk and annoying me, so I just put on Vitus really loud. That's are you talking my... to Josh or me? No, you. Me and him are cool, <laughs> Javi. <laughs> That's my favorite tour memory is just messing with Javi all the time. Josh is <laughs> Josh was my co-pilot. Yeah, it goes we vibing now. Like I love it. Yes, Vitus all the way. Um. <laughs> Betty goes, I'm watching this stream on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, and I don't know why. Listen, <laughs> it's I feel like I, I feel like responsible because I don't really know what I'm doing. And I've said this like five times this whole stream, but I know people come in and out. So like there is a way for me to like pick a streaming service that also shows you guys all the comments. So we're replying to people from Facebook, YouTube. So it's actually like Anybody who, if you guys are just on YouTube, you're only seeing YouTube comments. You're not seeing like what's coming in from Facebook and stuff. So I get why you might want to watch on all three platforms. We appreciate you. More eyes on us. We love it. 
Um, hey, Josh, um, Stephen from Florida said, what about a day to remember? Oh, yeah. I love those guys. That would be awesome. That's one of my favorite bands. I just want to do a quick couple of shout outs to Ezra from London. He says he'll book out the stadium for us. So, all right. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. It's all coming uh, together. Luis from, <laughs> Luis from uh, Brazil. Uh, hola. Or um, what? You, obrigado. 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 Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's just to say hi is just hola. Obrigado is uh, thank you. Oh. I think. Yeah, because oh. I said gracias earlier, and then you corrected me. Um, okay, so a scary says, uh, I love you since 2014. There's a bunch of people on here who have been like, oh, I, I, let's see. Todd Jerry said he, or we sent him a message on Instagram years ago, and he's been yeah. a fan ever since. I think that's awesome. Thank you for being here. Uh, scary from Mexico. Um, Let's see. <laughs> Patty says Mars would be cool. Yeah. A moon show, maybe. A moon. Yeah. First man on the moon. First, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Perfect. Moon. <laughs> I don't know how comfortable I would be getting into a space rocket knowing that my band name is the Nearly Dead, so. Right. Yeah. I feel like that's a miss. That's irony at its finest. <laughs> yeah, being I'm such a sci-fi nerd, but I don't know if I would have the guts to go like in a spaceship. Maybe after like um you know, cuz they're already talking trying to figure out how to do uh civilian flights into space. And so I'm like once they've done it enough where it's like flying doing an airplane flight then yeah totally i'll go up into space but i'm not going to be one of those guinea pigs i've seen how that turns out and like sunshine and alien like i'm not dying out there okay so mr orange says sup from london town you guys seem the most balanced people on live what does that mean balance We're chill right sounds like a compliment it sounds yeah. like a yeah <laughs> is that is that like uk slang or i mean i'm assuming london town you mean london i don't know if london or maybe town, like our levels are pretty balanced like the mix okay. you know? oh. um so uh mr orange if you're out there explain to us what you mean we are pretty chill though i mean we're a pretty laid back band don't you guys think yeah i mean yeah. i have my y'all were like mm. I have my moments, I know. Um, by the way, I want to point out that a few people actually recognize Vitus, and I appreciate that. Everybody knows Vitus, man. He's way bigger than we are. John just asked if I've ever seen Alien. Dude, why, no. why would John go to play it? on the sun? Why? Sorry, comments. Playing I, fun, it would burn alive. Yes, I've seen Alien before. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, that you have answer. a lot more ink than the last time we all saw each other. When's the last time we all saw each other? By the way, last year. Like it was when we were recording "Watch Your Back," right? Was yeah. that? Well, it was last. That was in like January, wasn't it, or March? Didn't we release that in like March or April or something? So it was like. Was that last or was that 2018? I can't even fucking remember. 2020. It was 20. We saw each other in 2019 for sure. Our last show was in 2019. That's it. Um, so last March. So it's been a year and like almost almost two years because we're in November already. So that's. But yeah, you've got a lot more ink. Yeah, I've been working on a sleeve and I've been working on it since March. It's got a long way to go, but. It's all, not all of my favorite sci-fi movies, but it's a bunch of my favorite sci-fi movies. And I even got Javi tattooed on me. No. <laughs> you got yeah. Javi No, yeah. no don't do it. <laughs> so I was do like um, doing like, you know, there's Fifth Element and uh, Blade Runner. And so War of the Worlds. But then 
I got Javi tattooed right there. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have. Damn. That's yeah. So funny. That looks so good. <laughs> that was a great skit. Steve, right? I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. No, that's really cool. But wait a minute. I have to squit. I have to um, switch over to some of these comments because Mr. Orange is uh, I'm I'm confused because he goes, oh, it's definitely a compliment. OK. And. Oh, Fireoni says, I was just listening to your songs on my run today. That's amazing. I hope you had a great run. Um, let's see. What else? Just seems like you have your head screwed on properly. Thank you. Um, are you guys a band? He yeah. must have just run into us on uh, YouTube just randomly. Maybe you saw the live. And what? I don't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're a band. Um, Mr. Orange, welcome to the zombie nation. We are a band called the nearly dead. Um, I, I feel a little ignorant myself because I thought that anybody watching live on YouTube was like our subscribers on YouTube. Um, I didn't know that random, like you could just watch random YouTube lives, which is awesome. So we're happy that you, we're here. We're happy that you're here. Unless you're trolling us in that case, if you're secretly my fiance, Jordan trolling us from the other room, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> I know, that you're not. There. I, I, I know that you're not I want to connect with all of you guys like I want to see like this is I wish we were I wish we could see all the fans I wish uh a big what's his name I wish some of these people could tell us how to pronounce their names because I don't want to screw them up but somebody was shouting out my Mad Max shirt and I don't know how to say his or her name but I also got Mad Max's uh car is right there from the How do you spell it? It's Z U A D O. Zudo is Zu Zuado, I think. Zuado. That's what That's I would say. All right, we need Josh to talk more. Okay, Josh, do you yes. have any favorite video games you play from Bella on YouTube? Ooh. Well, I uh, The Last of Us Part Two is definitely takes the cake for me right now um nice i've been trying to 100 percent complete zelda breath of the wild so that's been a that's, that's been awesome. like a two-year task it's going on <laughs> two years so uh and i haven't really been doing it too much but i'm trying to find all the seeds all the shrines uh all that good stuff but uh, i would definitely say right now the last of us part two is what's going on but i do uh miles morales just came out so that's definitely the next thing i want to get on spider-man yeah if you're a spider-man guy i am a spider-man guy <laughs> <laughs> they changed peter parker though that's a little wild so i gotta see what that's all about but yeah that was weird that they changed that last minute i was okay. like I don't know, maybe it has to do with cohesion in the next games or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's speaking my language. I love talking video games. Oh, I don't want to brag and say I'm better than the rest of the band, but I'm better than the rest of y'all because my Xbox Series X came in the mail on Sunday, so... How did you even get it, Steve? <laughs> Dude, on the pre-order day, like, so... Being that I experienced a pre-order, I don't know how any of these people are going to pre-order the Nearly Dead's track because it's tough to get a pre-order these days. But I literally sat in front of my computer with a bunch of windows open from all the different stores, just hitting refresh, hitting refresh until like I had like to go in my Target cart like five times and it would like glitch out and be like, you don't have an item in your cart. And then finally, uh, Amazon got them again and so I got one on Amazon, That's but awesome. I'm waiting for Cyberpunk to come out next month because I'm just going to play that and never leave my house. <laughs> <laughs> I tried for the PS5, but that's what it did. It glitched out. I had it in my cart and then it just glitched out, but I only tried on Walmart and that sucked. <laughs> Sad story because I didn't get it. <laughs> Bummer. I want to switch back to some comments real quick because we're on the Mr. Orange saga. <laughs> um, not, not, not trolling and not Jordan next door. Um, and, um, Sebastian Peterson on YouTube says, speaking of tattoos, I have the nearly deads on my neck. So I'd love to see that. Cause I don't believe you. 
Um, is it possible to post in a comment? Like a picture? I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I didn't think this whole thing through. Like, how are people going to like text pictures or send pictures to us? I guess you can send it to us on, you can email us or DM us on face on Facebook or I don't even know. I don't know. We're, we're trying, um, but we would love to see that. So tag us or find us on Facebook, YouTube, tag us, um, uh, Instagram. Um, Betty says, I really draw all of you, but it's almost impossible to find references of all of you together. So we definitely need to do a new photo shoot for sure, but we haven't been able to see each other in like a year. So, right. Um, and then Ray said Korok seeds, right? I'm not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, the devil. <laughs> Daniel got banned Wait, from Facebook. Man, probably doing some shady, shady stuff. Right. Daniel? Yeah. Ban which which one? Ban 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 or, yeah. to oh. He was probably trying to sell cocaine on the Facebook. <laughs> marketplace i think, <laughs> oh, I, think yeah. I know why so so tinker hell was saying uh use a, a hashtag on social media if you guys do hashtag the nearly deads we uh, we kind of check that hashtag often we've definitely not been on social media for a while uh this is like our big hurrah like hey we're back uh are there still people out there party and clearly there are so that's kind of exciting right guys yeah yeah rocking Awesome. I want you guys to be able to see the comments next time because this is really, it's more fun when you can see the comments. I feel bad. Um, this feels like a podcast. <laughs> it kind of is. No, yeah, it? we're just talking. You might, be, you might be happy. Okay, another thing that I'm learning is that now that I know that just anybody can like see these, there, there's some like dirty stuff coming in the comments and it's like, do it. I don't know. There's bots that you're supposed to do to be like moderate that shit, but we didn't do that today. So hopefully those people just kind of disappear but uh especially on twitch and stuff i know that there's a big problem with like people just like spamming or doing whatever like just because so yeah you're right um most of the time like the fans like fight our battles for us <laughs> so yeah. it's like yeah, i mean yeah we're so American, Midas says. Okay, we are. <laughs> I mean, that's true. <laughs> we are Ben Affleck, so. <laughs> Do any of you have a favorite anime you watch? Mm. Oh, and it's Grim Slaughter still wants to know what's the most uncomfortable string on a guitar. The G string. <laughs> of course. Not, yeah, of I mean, course. It, yeah, right. he just... <laughs> I don't know. I don't watch a ton of anime. I really like the Castlevania anime on Netflix is really good. And then I have the like Studio Ghibli collection. Ghibli. Some people say Ghibli. Some people say Ghibli. I don't know what's correct. I don't know if it's neither or, but. Gosh, like, for me, uh, number one always has to be Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z is always my number one. But uh Naruto is fantastic. I love like Cowboy Bebop. Um, Attack on Titan is really good. I've been wanting to watch uh, My Hero Academia. I haven't watched that yet, but I heard that's really good. So I love anime. <laughs> it's one of my faves. I think Netflix is doing really good with their animes. They got a cyberpunk anime coming out. They got... Um, few that they're working on if if they're anything like castlevania i'm sure it's gonna be great yeah um okay i'm gonna do i'm gonna do some quick fire questions um mr orange our new number one fan did want to ask of us what our top five favorite bands are which i i have that on like i can i can tell you guys what they are but think of that we're gonna come circle back to that one um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Dan Gorbea because he did mention that he likes my new solo um, song. So thank you so much um, for, for those. It's really good. Thank you. And Javi has a whole solo album as well. Actually a few. Um, so check him out. Army of a hundred sheep. Um, maybe Steve, if you're in the comment sections, you can like tag um, Javi's 
like social media and stuff like that and tell people because he's on Spotify, my new singles on Spotify. So I just want to shout out to um Dan for uh, repping that. It was a lot of fun doing a solo song. Um I'll I'm put them all on there. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do more solo music. Um, we're going to be focusing on the Nearly Deads as well at the same time. So it's I'm going to be very busy. Um, and then Craig, um, I just want to shout out, Craig, if you're still watching, um, thank you so much for joining my Patreon. Um, I Your comment is so far back up the stream that I, I'm sorry. But I just wanted to give you a shout out and say thank you for joining last night. Um, and then Stephen Hart asked... What's our favorite lockdown movie? Mm. My song. What's my song? Can we escape them? I stand alone, not sure where to Um, as the kids are saying these days, uh, TJ's new single slaps. <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, see, Bella, Army of 100 Sheep. She's digging it. She loves it. Oh, uh, yeah. I see, Bella. There's a, uh, for that comment, the lockdown movie, there's a movie, I think it's called Train to Busan. Oh, it's a dude, Korean, that's so good. It's a Korean movie, and it's a zombie movie, and it's, and I'm not really, like, a huge horror fan, but it's awesome. It's you're killer. Band, you're in the wrong band if you're not a horror fan. <laughs> I'm not really either, though. Let's, that's the newsflash. Train to Busan. Oh, yeah. yeah it's so good. Really They're making good. a sequel, too. Watch that. I haven't seen that. So um, I can't. TJ, you're going to have to put the links in the Twitch. I can't sign out or sign in. So oh. I put him up in Facebook and on YouTube. I don't know who that's going to. Oh, it's going to everybody. Okay. And it's as Steve and Toby, I think. Or, or I, I don't even know what's happening right now. I'm Steve and Toby, you're Steve and Toby. I don't know what's going on. Um, We're all Steve and Toby. Bobby, what do, you want, Steve. do you want to have a Facebook URL or an Instagram? Well, what's your Instagram? I put his uh, uh, Spotify up just now. Yeah, it's just it's just Army of 100 Sheep, at oh. Army of 100 Sheep. On Instagram? Whatever. On Instagram, yeah. Okay. Well, okay, perfect. So a lot of people giving love to um, Train to Busan, Train to Busan. A lot of people- Train to love. Busan, yeah. Um, a lot of people giving some love on that. Um, if you like Korean films, you definitely have to watch Parasite. Was Parasite, so okay. Can we talk about Parasite? And how it was okay. Know? It was I okay. Never, I didn't see it. I think it was. I think it was overhyped. Tommy, I feel like it's not cultured enough. It won. I didn't watch it until after it like won Best Picture. Didn't it win Best Picture at the Oscars? Yeah. And I was like, well, what the fuck is this? I gotta watch it. And then it was on Netflix, and everyone's making a big deal because it was um, subtitles. It was like Korean films, like groundbreaking in all these ways because like a foreign film won Best Picture. And then all of a sudden, it was on Netflix. Like that's weird. Like normally, Best Pictures don't go on um you know netflix so we watched it and i yeah i'm conflicted like i feel like i hope the message didn't like go over my head you know what i mean it, it was a it was, it was very a about like class for sure yeah. um because that's the big issue yeah. over there is like the division of the wealthy and the poor but i just like that director the director did it he also did the host um, I kind of geek out on his stuff, but I think I thought it was a great film because the acting was phenomenal, but it sets up like kind of being this like it almost feels comedic and then it gets darker and darker and takes a turn into this like um, kind of backed into the corner like you don't really you're pushed to this extreme that you wouldn't normally be in, but you're just like kind of fighting to survive sort of thing. And I don't know, I really enjoyed it, but I like a lot of really weird stuff. So if you've ever seen the movie Possum, you, you know what I mean. It was a good movie. I just didn't understand why the hype was there. 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I, was it supposed to be funny? You know what I mean? Like in the beginning, it was funny. Like the, what they were doing to the family, kind of mm. like getting themselves in there. I was like, this is hilarious. But then the ending just went like, so I was yeah. like, okay, yeah. is, that, is that why it's winning Oscars? Because people are like shocked. Um, but I was like, I'm not gonna lie. I was pissed. I was like, no, no. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I think it won because the award goes to... <laughs> I, I, think a lot of too, is <laughs> I think right now there's a transformation going because in Hollywood, like uh, Asian actors and directors and and people aren't weren't getting a whole lot of recognition. Same with like the Latino and Asian presence in Hollywood isn't very big, and they're not like getting. They're always getting kind of like the side roles or the B characters or like those foreign films aren't getting the recognition that they deserve. So I think it being such a well shot film with great acting and a good story and everything, I, I think it was just cool to have that get the recognition and be like, look, it's not about just like a bunch of white dudes shooting a movie about white dudes blowing things up, you know, and, or whatever. Um, so it's, I think that's part of it too, but. Well, I would say aside from like the race stuff, like I actually like what's going on. I think, I think it's cool that other filmmakers are getting uh, noticed and like Hollywood's monopoly over like the film industry is like kind of going down. Just a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I actually like, I think I had, I shared a, an Instagram post <laughs> I, I'm not sure if it's still up there, but it was like the Hollywood sign over the hills, except instead of it saying Hollywood, it said Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But um, yeah, everyone's stuck at home, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so it's, it's just cool that like uh, there are other avenues of movie making and it's, it's kind of uh, encouraging, you know, if you're trying to do that. Yeah, that's a great point, Javi. Like giving like, it's kind of like what's happening with film is what already happened with the music industry. Um, somebody earlier kind of asked like what programs and stuff that we use to record at home. Obviously there's Pro Tools and I use Logic Pro and, you know, there's all these resources for people like, you know, us to keep making music. It doesn't take the huge million dollar record budget. Same thing with movies. I mean, you can shoot a movie on your freaking iPhone. It has 4k. Like, True. Pretty crazy. Get lots of space. No, and it, just, <laughs> it really goes to show you, it goes to show you in my opinion, no matter how good the quality is, the content is always more important. If you have a good story, a good song, a good lyric, or a good that in, in music is a storytelling as well which I've been trying to embrace and get better at over the years. You know, it's something that I, I'm always trying to be better at as better songwriter, you know, lyricist. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter like how, what big budget or whatever. I mean, obviously if you're trying to make a big sci-fi, maybe you need the budget, but story is so important as well. <laughs> as it, well, Something that I didn't think I was going to get into because I'm burnt out on superhero stuff, but The Boys on Amazon. Have Josh, have you seen that yet? No, I haven't seen that. It's ridiculous. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> I need to check that it's out. so perfect. It's exactly what would happen if superheroes would, were real. They yeah. would all be corrupt like politicians. They'd all be owned by corporations. And I've heard of it. Yeah, it's, I've seen it's ridiculous. It's so good. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Steven so from Florida shouted out rubber. I saw that movie about the tire that kills everyone. <laughs> are you guys on Steve? Are you looking at the YouTube comments? Cause okay. Again, I did not know yeah. that just everybody could watch this. I really thought it was just be going out to subscribers. And now there's random people being like, what the fuck are these people talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Who are they? What is this? <laughs> We're in also That's like, crazy. I, Maybe I just wasn't descriptive enough. We're uh, we're taking over the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we just turned viral. <laughs> right? Look at these our live streams. <laughs> our live stream is going to be uh, broadcast on uh, the New York 
the building Times Square. <laughs> Times Square. Yeah. Wow. That would be awesome. Uh, though this person, her name is, t her or her, um, they, their name is Tella. Um, the pothead room is what she's saying on YouTube. Uh, and then Sebastian, I think it's a BS stream. Like BS as in we're just shooting the shit, I guess. I mean. You could sorry. say that, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It's like an organized BS stream, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. honestly, I mean, one of my favorite podcasts is literally this is what it is. It's just like four guys um, that just are friends and hang out and talk and they just something that happened in their day. They all like discuss it. Like one episode they were talking about like their Taco Bell orders and how they were pissed that like they removed items. And he was like, the Nacho Supreme was like, that was my anchor. Everything else got decided around that and they took it away. And so I had a panic attack. I didn't even know how to order or one time they were talking about what the appropriate amount of deepness is for wipe, wiping your butt. <laughs> like, Hold that thought. <laughs> I everyone thinks it's the pothead room, right? Hold that, hold that thought. <laughs> I will say that, that when Taco Bell took away the double decker, Yes, I, I got pissed. I mean, we yes. all like. I, I can, I can, I can, ha I can uh, relate to that. <laughs> yeah, I loved, I loved the grillers, and they're gone. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Damn it. what he was pointing out, and the funny thing is, is I have the same exact order as him. Is that I always start with the Nacho Supreme, and then like depending on how hungry is, like what I get with it. But they're like, but they still have the Nacho Bel Grande. It's the exact same thing. It's just one smaller. There's just less of it. And they got rid of the, the smaller thing. And they're like, sorry, we don't have it. And it's like, can't you just give me a smaller box and like charge me less? Like, it's a tortilla with cheese and eating vegetables. You could make everything. Like, <laughs> the lava sauce is what I miss from like early 2000s. Mm. <laughs> the pothead room that is so funny <laughs> we're just talking about Taco Bell for 15 minutes partake <laughs> <laughs> because I definitely don't no I mean I, really don't I think don't every once in a while I don't because the thing is is I can't drink and smoke at the same time or I'll fall asleep so most of the time when somebody's like do you want to smoke I'm already drinking so no. I'm like no the answer is no. No, um, I do. I, I I do like. Uh, I mean, I, I it's been a long time, but like CBD is is uh, like the edible is fine, but uh, I don't really smoke at all now. Yeah, I eat too much when I smoke, so <laughs> yeah, I get nervous and weird. Yeah, I mean that's when I'm sober too. But yeah, Josh just <laughs> prefers shots of one fifty one. Is more his. Oh, yeah. Guys, all so the Josh Wave. Josh Wave. This is Josh Perone. He's our fearless drummer. I want you guys all to ask specific drummer questions specifically to Josh. <laughs> so any questions that roll in. Um. Also, okay. Um. On another comment, they said to watch the movie Santa Jaws. <laughs> Santa Jaws. Jaws. That sounds amazing. <laughs> A shark. Okay, so bionic shell shock on Twitch. It's a shark donning, donning a Santa hat and a candy cane, protruding out of its head, <laughs> killing everyone. This, this is so. Oh my god. I'm, I, I'm not now. I'm not sure anymore if you know who our band is, but if you don't know who our band is, this is right up our fucking alley. We're absolutely watching that, <laughs> and we're gonna shoot a music video. Music. Santa Jaws theme is happening. Santa Jaws is gonna be my Christmas card this year. It's gonna be everything. I can't wait to watch this. Um, and then also there was a band uh, thrown out to us. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it right. Cause I think it's in another language, Sin, Sin Lacrosse. Um, so we will, I wrote down the band name. I'll check them out um, from Todd on Facebook. I'm going to, I'm going to go with Sin Lacrosse. I'm good friends with their vocalist, Patricia. So we will check them out. Thank you for the, um, thanks for the recommendation, Todd. Um, Douglas saw us on the blame shift VIP. Do you guys remember that? The yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate all you guys who have seen us live, who have 
been a fan of ours since 2013 or whenever it may have been, we've watched Never Look Back, subscribe to us on YouTube, subscribe to us on Twitch and Facebook and everything. We, we truly appreciate you guys. I just want to take a second to shout that out really quick um, as we kind of keep trucking along here. This is our first full band like live stream like in this context uh, where we're streaming to Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube all at the same time. Um, so this is, this is, I'm having a great time. Um, hopefully you guys are, uh, Josh from Fire What's your favorite drummer? Or who is your favorite drummer? Favorite drummer. Don't say <laughs> Travis Barker. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to give it to, well, I mean, Travis was a huge influence on me. I think any drummer can be an influence on, but, uh, I'm going to say the rev from event sevenfold. I was actually just talking to one of my buddies about, him. we were reminiscing about just like that video of him uh, in high school, he's like 15 and like doing this crazy solo, like just the kind of stuff he could do. Um, I mean, I'm sure he, I, I know he practiced a lot. I've watched a lot of interviews of how precise he was and it really shows in his drumming and writing and he's so creative. I mean, some of the stuff he does in their songs. So he will, he's missed, but I would, I'll give it to the Rev is my favorite drummer. Awesome. Yeah. Um, next question. Peyton asks, what made you get into drumming? Ooh. Um, I don't know. Well, I was, when I was like nine, I took uh, drum lessons, but I think I wanted to, but I can't really remember. I didn't really like get into it until high school. And that's when like, I started listening to Blink and Avenge. I mean, pop punk in general, just the fast, like, fast drums sounded cool and that's what I wanted to do kind of um, yeah that's what got me into it awesome do you know Matt Thomas or Abe Cunningham Cun Cunningham oh, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, know who the fuck they are either yeah do you know do you know them that was from Dan on YouTube I personally know <laughs> Are they, are they drummers? I'm assuming they're drummers in like bigger bands. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not real sure. Sorry. <laughs> um, hardest drum from Tyler on YouTube. Hardest drum fill you had to do. Hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. So wow. beginning, beginning of invisible tonight. Or no, was that we, that, it was the beginning of uh, what, what song is that, Steve? <laughs> that I just kept messing up all the time. What's, I thought it was oh, uh, yeah, it wasn't easy way out, easy way oh, out. Yeah, I don't know. What, it's easy. not even like difficult, it was just <laughs> I don't know if it was the click <laughs> that threw me off or something. I don't know. It, it's like where it comes <laughs> in, it doesn't come in on a downbeat, it's like on an and. Yeah, it's, I don't know. There is, but the, so yeah, it's kind of that little. I mean, it's not. <laughs> I remember yeah. those times. <laughs> but for the record, most of the time live, I nailed it. <laughs> it was in practice. <laughs> no, but I would say, yeah, I, I, that's a tough one. I mean, oh we, my we god! Could say that because I did struggle. No. Yeah. Um. Daniel, shout out Abe from Deftones. I love Deftones. Oh. And uh, yeah, Abe is so groovy and tight. Like his drumming's phenomenal. It's not like overly busy. It just like is right in the pocket. Like I love it. You know, actually, uh, who I'm really impressed with is uh, John Otto from Limp Biscuit. He didn't really like do a lot, but he just, it's kind of similar. He just kept that groove and like sounded super tight. Yeah. I think he, I think he was a uh, very underrated. Yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of like the whole appeal I have with like Taylor Hawkins is just, he's so in the pocket. It's not like he's doing like crazy, you know, fills left and right. He's just so tight and hits hard and, looks cool doing it <laughs> mm -hmm. um somebody john says all hail the rev and avenge sevenfold is an awesome band um john oh, yeah. 
Um, Tyler on YouTube says Luke Holland is my influence as a drummer. Josh, what are your thoughts on him? Oh, he's, he's wild. <laughs> he is um, extremely is talented. Holland? What's that? Who is Luke Holland? Who is he from? Well, he was, oh, who's he playing for now? He was a YouTube drummer, but now he's, maybe they'll answer in the comments of who he's playing for. I can't, I'm drawing a blank. I, I'm not familiar with that, with that name. So. Yeah. But no, he's unbelievable. I mean, his, his stick tricks, <laughs> I mean, it's just, he's, he's on another level. Yeah. He's oh, awesome. Jordan, Jordan texted me. He goes, he's in the word, word alive. Oh. Hmm. Um, there's a question that I think is, can be an everybody question that I don't want to skip up, but Eldon on Facebook asked what our favorite B horror film is. Ooh, that's a good Our question. favorite B horror film? B, B horror, like B rated horror. Oh, Piranha, right? <laughs> <laughs> what about three what about three double d though no, oh yeah that i mean the whole seer franchise <laughs> i mean all of them definitely piranha big the fucking the head falling into the tits like i can't it's hilarious there's it doesn't get better than that and the, the actors that are in it are fucking hilarious and i also like tucker and dale versus evil but i don't uh, i was gonna say that I, I was gonna say that movie. that's not a b movie piranha is a b movie sharknado is a b movie like tucker okay yeah tucker and dale is more not, like it's, it's more a, indie than it is b it's a comedy yeah i don't understand why these kids keep killing themselves <laughs> tucker and dale's awesome <laughs> i bought it on blu-ray i was like fucking just, awesome movie but <laughs> hey remember when we were on tour and watched zombie <laughs> <laughs> oh awesome. yeah Tom oh, is that was good um, <laughs> i don't know if it's considered b you know because it could have been like a a hit when it came out but i love the 80s return of the living dead because it's like so typical 80s horror like the it's like the breakfast club meets zombie movie because it's like the group of friends has your typical there's the jock there's the cheerleader there's the punk girl there's the guy with the leather and chains like they feel like all the you know there's the disco kid and they're like all hanging out in like the graveyard and of course like 20 minutes into the movie one of the girls ends up topless for the rest of the movie and like you know the <laughs> The zombies come because there's some like military ooze in the thing. So it's just so cheesy and cliche 80s horror, but I don't know if it's technically B, but one of my favorites too is um, um, Peter Jackson, one of his first films, uh, Dead Alive. And it's like a zombie film that takes place in New Zealand. And it's just so over the top gory and just like ridiculous. And his mom turns into this giant blob zombie and births out this thing. And there's like a baby zombie that's going around biting people. And he like gets a lawnmower and just starts, holds it up and starts lawn mowing zombies. It's crazy. <laughs> Dead alive. Look it up. <laughs> Anybody else, Javi, any B favorite B mo movies, B horror? I don't know. I mean, I said earlier, I'm not like a huge horror buff, but like, um, I don't know if this counts, but I started w watching uh, some old school episodes of uh, Goosebumps on Netflix. Oh, nice. That's good. So I was brought me back to my childhood. Yeah. I lived off of Goosebumps, man. Um, I just want to... Um, go back to some of the comments, Todd and Dave, a bunch of people on Facebook, YouTube, everybody is talking about Neil Pert from Rush, um, okay. RIP Neil, uh, yeah. Paul from Pantera. Um, and also Paul, um, Paul on YouTube says Angela Lee's from the dead deads taco mouth and our Nelson band is a great drummer and little known fact. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that we actually, Angie auditioned for the Nearly Deads bef years ago before we, you know, we picked Josh. So she was like this close to being in the Nearly Deads. And then she was in the Dead Deads, which was totally weird, but. <laughs> did, did they, did they, did that comment say Angie on it? Yeah. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, says Angela Lee from the Dead Dads is a great drummer. So I was like, oh yeah, yeah. like we know her. She's a and she's yeah. incredible. She's a great person. We love her so much. Um, I love all the shout outs for drummers, Anthrax, um, Charlie Benate, um, Vlad of Ginger. I love this. We're getting so much love for the drummers. I haven't heard Carter Buford yet. Oh, here's oh, here's a good I don't know who that is. Uh, the D Dave Matthews band. Ooh. Oh, I don't think that's our demo, but <laughs> he's awesome. <laughs> I don't know a lot by name. I, mean, I love just... Dave Matthews band. Like I am not yeah. ashamed. They're so great. <laughs> I purposely People are shouting out <laughs> killer clowns from outer space. <laughs> so, um, one more, one more question for Josh. And then I want you guys to throw in some guitar questions for Javi and um some guitar questions for steve so if you guys have questions for them i want to i want to see them because this is a lot of fun um josh so this is from patty on a uh, youtube josh what is one piece of advice you give to somebody tr looking to try drums looking to give drumming a try one piece of um advice. well definitely go for it it's i always say it's the funnest instrument to play um yeah i think uh some words of advice you your parents might not enjoy it if you live with them while you're practicing <laughs> you may want to invest in like an electric kit when you first start I, now nah, that's not really good you want an acoustic kit but uh well, what did you want to like learn your rudiments first oh like, yeah definitely i mean i i don't know if i would dive straight into an electric kit <laughs> no <laughs> don't don't take that yeah but they're too expensive no rhythm <laughs> you could do like a Your drum pad he's gonna have to deal pad. with it Get a drum pad. Mine did. Yeah. yeah no a drum pad um which i had one just that actually when i was first taking drum lessons when i was like a little kid uh my teacher had me play on it was a full pad set it wasn't like real drums at all so definitely that but yeah rudiments are the the heart and soul of it all so that's a big one your paradiddles and flams and all that cool stuff so yeah i guess uh practice 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 that's my that's advice <laughs> go for it and practice 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 yeah practice. You've heard and it from ignore people. people that say you're too loud. <laughs> For sure. You can't turn down the drums. Hey, yeah. there you go. There you go. Josh in real life is super quiet. Well, I don't think you're quiet, man. Like, I don't know. I, I'm just a fucking loud mouth on the stream. So that's why everyone's like, Josh, talk more. Cause I interrupt you guys all the time. I get it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm the front person. Yeah. Um, but um, <laughs> when we are all hanging out, I don't, I mean, Javi's the quiet one. That's huh? true. Yeah. yeah. I spend, I spend a lot of time reflecting on my. He's songs. stoic. <laughs> stoic. Unless, yeah. unless I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> then he's, <laughs> then he's smart. He's over here texting. All right. We also, oh, um, sorry. Uh, Patty wants to know if we have watched Velasa Pastor yet. And that the answer is no for me. Oh my God. Oh. It sounds like I need to see it though. I know. And it's the details. <laughs> where it's it, um, so to anybody watching who can't see the comments, Santa Jaws is available on Amazon Prime. So if you want to get out there and watch Santa Jaws, Amazon Prime, um, send us the details for Velasa Pastor. And if you guys want to comment a link to um, the, that band, Saint, Saint Lacrosse, any bands you guys um, think anybody else who's watching should just tag them, you know, so do their website, you know, if you guys are on Facebook or YouTube, like we all are a big community of music lovers. So post some links if you want. I have no problem with that. Don't spam us. Um, we're getting some love for the blob and dawn of the dead in 2004 um the thing which is a great movie uh, as well oh, i love it dead alive like you were saying um killer clowns from outer uh outer space troll troll 2 um um i have i haven't seen velocipaster but i have seen the ads and trailer for it <laughs> i've been meaning to watch it phantasm in the 1970s was that is that the movie with debbie harry 
Um, I don't know. I know the name. She was in a weird movie in the 80s. And I thought it was fan. I could be wrong. Um, Sebastian, here's here's switching it up while we're waiting for guys to ask questions about guitars. Um, what's your favorite prepared meal? I'm a chef. Um, Sebastian on YouTube, I'm a chef. So what is your favorite prepared meal? Mm. Like something that we make, like, is he asking just like what our favorite food is or what we like to cook? Yes. I would say a prepared meal would be like, oh, I really like spaghetti and meatballs. Not just like my favorite food is pizza. I don't know. Oh, uh, cause I mean, I love cooking. I, I meal plan and I cook like four or five nights a week, but. Um, I'll go first. <laughs> I love Thanksgiving food. Ooh, I can get down on some stuffing, dressing, turkey, like all, like all that stuff. Oh yeah. What about you, Josh? Uh, that's a tough one. I mean, I don't cook. <laughs> I microwave. <laughs> um, I like 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 chicken alfredo is definitely a go to for me. I really like that. I guess that's kind of like a meal, like mac a real meal bites from sheets. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> mac and cheese. That's it. Chicken tenders at every restaurant we've ever been to on tour. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. What what do I get the same of every time? Uh, the cheese, the cheese mac and cheese bites or whatever. No, no. Uh, Quesadilla, quesadilla. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> every every, every time. He could be yesterday. at fucking Ruth's Chris and chocolate or a goddamn quesadilla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a very exquisite eater, but I like <laughs> steak. You'll get there. <laughs> um, what this is such a fun. I mean, I'm a I'm a vegetarian now. I have been for a few years. I basically watched what the health documentary i had already kind of toyed around with the idea of being vegetarian but after watching that documentary i like completely changed my lifestyle and you know um so it's really difficult because like i feel like my old answer would have been like fried chicken and chicken and waffles from roscoe's and like it's really i do miss stuff like that sometimes um i like fried cauliflower i love vegetables like pasta like all that kind of stuff so that's going to be my veggies. Yay. Wah, wah, wah. I know. Boring. <laughs> I also really love like goat cheese and goat like, cheese is amazing. Oh, like goat cheese on like fig, goat cheese, fig on a cracker or like, um, I just did goat cheese and pumpkin butter. Interesting. Prepare. Hmm. Do you like Indian food at all? I love, oh shit, yeah, like Thai, like curry, um, yeah. Well, I like, um, I love, yeah. I was cooked, prepared a vegetarian Indian dish and it's it's their cheese, I think it's cotija or it's yeah. kind of like Spanish cheese and it's kind yeah. of salty, white, but yeah, you like pan fry it and sear it on all sides. So it almost looks like tofu, but it's like chunks of cheese and it goes in like the curry sauce on rice and it's really good. I don't know. I, I'm like that person that I don't like doing the same thing over. So usually when I cook, I'm always like finding like a different recipe. So I'm not like doing one thing over and over, but my favorite food is breakfast food. And that's one of those things that <laughs> I normally just follow recipes. I'm not like a chef like this guy where I can just come up with stuff. But breakfast is one of those things that I feel confident that it's just fun to like open the fridge and be like, what do I have? And then just create some like weird omelet or sandwich or something breakfast dish with just whatever I have at my disposal I mean we follow you on Facebook Steve we see <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm like when I see his post I'm like like where's the rest of it like how the hell are you supposed to eat this like <laughs> lord <Yeah. laughs> So we have some good questions coming in um, from John on Facebook. How do you guys go about soundproofing, especially when learning and no access to studios? I'm assuming he's talking about um, drums. Do you have um, any tips for like sound, like when you're first starting to learn? That's that's tough. I mean, to really soundproof a room is like you got to build it from the ground up or 
it's a project, but I mean, you can get things to help like obviously well carpet, um, definitely foam yeah. and for your walls. Like that's what I got going on. And this is like my makeshift studio. Um, some of the foam fell much back there, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I, I just thought you were in a giant cubicle. You know how cubicles are like that <laughs> fabric wall. I thought that was what was behind. Yeah, Like there's a bunch of guitars and drums and stuff over there. Ooh. Everything's kind of, and there's a keyboard over there. It's just a little makeshift. Yeah, your room. own little studio. Josh, like a little amp. <laughs> you, need, you need me to come over and like make that room function for you because it's a fucking mess. I know. I, I'm still putting it together. It kind of does. So, I would be so ecstatic if I had a room just for my keyboard. My shit is all in my bedroom. It like, kind of does look like a, a cubicle now that you... If I like, <laughs> show more of my room, it'll just give away what a huge dork I am. So you have, then, you have these little uh, egg crates, right? So um, uh, for for everybody, uh, you know, these egg crates are. I'm assuming you got them on Amazon. These are like twenty dollars for four on Amazon. I mean, they're not expensive. Um, what really helps soundproof is having lots of Star Wars Legos. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so like, yeah, actually the rug carpet is a really good, um, actually a good tip, especially even, even yeah. if you're just doing keyboard, because my keyboard, when I plunk away, um, and or I think I have hardwood floors, I mean, so get yourself a nice rug, a nice thick rug, absorb some of that sound. Um, some of the egg crates on your wall. Yeah. Um, if you guys are into singing or screaming or tr sorry, excuse me, trying to scream, um, if, if you guys are into heavier music, I have this thing called the belt box and it lets you kind of practice and <laughs> basically like a hockey cup. <laughs> it looks like a jock strap or whatever, but it, it's this really great invention, you know, and a lot of, um, opera singers and people that I like to like, look at online, they, you can sing into a towel, you put a towel over your head head or sing into a pillow it's really fucking weird but if you're doing like those weird like scaly warm-ups and stuff you can always just sing into a pillow I mean it's something that's I feel like it's great that somebody brought that up because right don't we all kind of worry about bothering our neighbors like with the noise like or our parents or whatever it's like I'm, it's the opposite for me I worry about them bothering me when I'm trying to sing <laughs> <laughs> that's All a good right. way to be awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's the best advice is just they just got to deal with it <laughs> <laughs> oh this is cool so um just a couple comments mr orange i remember seeing an interview with eric clapton when he was asked how it feels to be the guest best guitarist in the world and he replied ask prince nice awesome. um one. so carlos on twitch um, to um, the nearly dads to the guitarists on general what are your favorite guitar brands so Javi you want to we can, can kind of combine that with uh, Tyler on YouTube also asked what our favorite strings um, and pickups are okay cool so brand guitars strings and pickups and he asked if we ever had to replace them live um, also, I don't know if we want to shout out Fifth Horseman. He, was, he couldn't hang out. He just wanted to jump in and say that he adores our music and wishes us the absolute best. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Fifth Horseman. I would um, say um, for guitars, the two brands that I like best, I've never actually like, <clears throat> I've never actually played Gibson, but just being on the road with Steve, I know that Gibson's a great brand. Uh, the guitar that I personally use is uh, Gretsch, and I I love Gretsch. Like, I awesome. saved up all I saved up all my money to buy like my dream guitar, and ever since I've got it, like I've never wanted another guitar. I'm just like, nope, this is it. I don't <laughs> I don't need another one. But um, strings, I'd probably go with like Ernie Ball. Is uh, I don't know that that's just the one that I go to typically. But yeah, Gretsch and Gibson are. I, I feel like are the best brands, but what do you think, Steve? Yeah, no, I, Gretsch is great. Dave Grohl plays Gretsch. Uh, I've personally just been a big fan of Gibson SGs just because I like the way, the way the guitar is designed. It's easy to get high on the neck. 
um, because of that scoop in. Whereas if you play like a Les Paul or some other guitars, you kind of have to reach your hand awkwardly around. Um, and they're a little bit lighter than a Les Paul. So yeah, I've always liked Gibson, but I mean, it really depends on the song or what you're trying to do. Like certain, certain sounds or different songs, like, you know, I might want to use a Telecaster or a Strat or something sounds a little cooler. Like Smashing Pumpkins uses a Strat in a lot of their songs for like the grungier tones. Strings, I've always just kind of used Diodario. I don't think there's like a right or wrong. Um, we've used Ernie Ball too, like when we go on tour or like work tour, they give you free Ernie Ball and that kind of stuff. And pickups, I don't know. I Normally I just use whatever stock in the guitar that I bought. The only ones that I've ever like switched out is on my Strat. I put the, uh, I bought the Diod Diodario single coils here and they're pretty cool by the way i re remember when we first moved to nashville and then like i we went to frothy monkey and like i yeah. forget what clothing wasn't this like a wasn't it like a thrift or a clothing store or something the pink flying pig isn't that like the uh, the guy who's from all time low has his own clothing brand i thought that was his logo Maybe. I don't know. I just know it was a clothing brand and they were passing them out and I was like, I want a pig on my guitar. It was probably from Warp Tour or something. I mean, somebody in the comments was probably going to be like, oh, the flying pig or whatever that is. Um, somebody, we're getting a lot of love for Phil Collins. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A, a lot of love in the comments from YouTube and all over the, from, oh, Phil Collins because, yes. Um, Definitely. The original Genesis drummer. Dude, yeah. Phil Collins is a genius so me and javi just did a um a phil collins cover for a fan and learning the song it was um you'll be in my heart from the tarzan soundtrack and it the modulation the key changes the melody everything i was like this man is a genius i mean really learning that song i was like wow it, it's just powerful and i was crying the whole time um, I almost, I almost threw my quick. guitar away. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't lie. They're in Poland and they're going to bed, um, but I want you to tackle that name. I'm not going to do it. So while you're trying to figure out that name, I'm also going to point out that uh, Marissa Rose in the comments, um, this is a shirt. It may not have sleeves, but it is still a shirt. It's a whole shirt. And what <laughs> i'm watching in my house so i wear what i want <laughs> you're ruining the chat get out <laughs> who's ruining the Is chat a comment about what you're wearing steve <laughs> wait i can't even i'm not even where are you on youtube it's we, on facebook oh oh not sticking around oh fifth horseman oh wanted to tell you oh we already saw this one okay no you're talking no and uh and youtube uh okay he's from poland he's a or I think it's a he. Hey guys, 3 a.m. here, so I'm just stopping by to say hi. But I am just not even going to tackle that name. I don't know if I'm there because I'm still scrolling up to see some of the... Um... How do you spell it? W-S-Z-Y-S-T-K-O. Is that a real name? That sounds Polish. Yeah. He yeah, said he's they, Polish. yeah, they said cheers Wait, from Poland. Interesting. Wait a minute. I want to see. And I figured since TJ has Polish blood in her, she should be able to say it. <laughs> I don't know if I can see this person's um, actual name or if it's just like an emoji. Is there is there a picture like there with their eyes blacked out? No, it's just a blue. They, they don't have a picture. Shit. It's just a blue little thing. <sighs> All right. Well, maybe, maybe. I'm so backed up on comments. I'm sorry, guys. Thank you guys. All oh, for it's not a name. He just he just said it translates to whatever. I guess that's Polish for whatever. <laughs> that's I, interesting. I know. I, I know. Um, so when I was in college and I was in, um, you know, chorus and I did uh, a lot of like classical music and stuff like that, we, we had to learn a lot of Polish. And I actually sang in, um, we went to Austria, we went to Germany and there was a lot of Polish songs. So like, all I know is how to say Hage. Like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Hage. 
page. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. My ancestors, my people are from Poland, Poland and Germany. So, oh goodness. All right. Let me, okay. We're back on, uh, by the way, back way long ago, Alex Perez from LA said, Hey, and I remember, I remember Alex from like years and years ago. So I wanted to give you a shout out Alex from LA. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are still alive and well, thanks to people like you who have been supporting us from the beginning. Um, yeah, I, I meant to say something. I know. I was like, Alex. Yes. I was like, where is that guy? He was one of our like most dearest and oldest fans. Um, also somebody pointed out the Debbie Harry horror movie. Video, video drum. Video drum. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. It was, and it was also weird. And Jeff Woods <laughs> or James, James Woods. Ooh. Okay. Sebastian poach balsamic eggplant on ratatouille vegetarian is fun. And he also said that, and then he also was saying how, okay, so this is Sebastian, the chef was saying that he likes brave the song and that it pumps up his cooks. Oh, it sounds nice. like you have, sounds like you have people under you. So that's cool. Oh, <laughs> chef, oh probably, or... I get it now. Um, so f- uh, for the guitars on Revenge of the Nearly Deads, how was the songwriting process? Love the guitar intros on every song on the EP and the piano on As Good As It Gets as well. I think, I'm not sh- I don't remember. Was it Revenge? I think Steve came up with the riff and it was like, and that was it. And I was like, yo, Steve, put something on top of that. And he just was like, yeah. So then it, Marilyn Manson, like dissonant stuff. Yeah. I think we tried to get it to not sound like Mm. the Stone Cold Steve Austin (laughs) intro. (laughs) Because we were, you didn't tell us that it sounded like that until we were in too deep. We were literally like, Josh had already tracked drums and everything. So it was like, we had, to do that song at that point so well, yeah we, let's just talk about one of my favorite riffs diamond in the rough so what's, what's the question about the riffs or whatever how was the songwriting process um man well I know. yeah i don't i don't think we did I, a we we did a lot of that at, at uh, my dad's ranch. Remember, like my yeah. ways. Yeah. We we went to my dad's ranch in Texas, and we all got in like a shed. In the heat. and we set that up. was during the and, in this moment tour. A lot of the revenge album I wrote sitting in the trailer while we were waiting to like do sound check and all that, just on the acoustic. But yeah, I don't. I feel like some people when they tackle songwriting, it's like, you know, they want lyrics or the idea first, or I don't know, maybe people see it as like a whole picture of what they want. For me, it's just like, I'm just the type of person that I like noodle. I noodle and noodle until like I come up with something that I kind of like, or I feel that's catchy. And so then I have like that part, like most of the songs I've written, it's, the intro or that like riff is the first idea and then like everything gets written around that like it all it's like it's like yeah how can i write a song around this so that i can use this riff that i like and then ultimately from there it's like how do i get to a chorus like come up with a chorus after the riff and then like how do i get there like what's the journey to that chorus I like it. Good. Um, good question. Good chat. Um, shout out to Mr. Orange. I think he's probably already gone, but thank you for joining us. Please check out our music. If anybody's watching and doesn't know who we are, we are the nearly deads. We are a band <laughs> period. <laughs> That's all you need to know. We are a rock and roll band. Um, oh, somebody did ask your, um, your influences as guitarists because uh, sh- uh tyler was shouting out uh tyler Mor- uh, tyler was shouting out tom morello as an influence or somebody um i feel i you know this is our first time doing the stream so i'm like really not doing the comments in order so i apologize to you guys watching but we appreciate you all um 
So what about influences as far, cause we got Josh's. So what about guitarists? Javi, did, do you want to go first or? Um, I can go first, I guess. Uh, the biggest one is uh, Tom DeLong from Blink. That's, you know, I, I think I'm just, I, yeah, he's a, he's a big influence for my generation. And then probably underneath that, I'd probably go with um, James Hetfield, Metallica, like unbeaten, like when I start to like dig deep in my influences, I'm like, oh yeah, I did listen to a lot of, you know, Metallica as a kid. And then I guess, I'm not sure if I have a third one, but I'm sure there are. Definitely Rage Against the Machine for sure, Tom Morello. Um, yeah. By the way, you can hear Javi's Hetfield influence in his new solo project. Oh yeah. Some of those oh, you know, you. You know what's crazy is um, I actually was trying to to make a song similar to Enter Sandman and I wrote it in the same key and I tried to have like it was like similar and and the song is actually titled Stand with Sandman and yeah. so it's like not only is it written like uh, Enter Sandman but the name also alludes to that too. It's almost it's like a sequel to the song or something. Yeah, so. Um, also, Tyler, uh, who had brought up Tom Morello, it's his birthday in six days. So happy birthday to Tyler. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, Steve, feel- what about your influences, Billy Corgan? <laughs> well, surprisingly, <laughs> like, being the Smashing Pumpkins fan that I am, I don't feel like they've necessarily influenced me as much as a guitarist. I Billy Talent, right? More. Yeah, I feel like Smashing Pumpkins, the influence they have on me is just the songs as a whole. Yeah. And the creativity and like how all their music is so unique and different. They're, there's not a single album or a single song that sounds the same. Um, brilliant songwriters. But as far as guitars go, I hate like saying my influence because I feel like then it's going to be so obvious and apparent when you hear a music and they're going to be like, Steve's a fraud. He just rips off. No, <laughs> but, but nobody thinks that. Um, not hearing he, your influence. Yeah, Ian DeSaw from Billy Talent's a big influence, I think, because when I started learning guitar, I didn't play with bands. I just played by myself. And I liked how he was lead and rhythm basically he's the only guitarist in the band and there's so much guitar work going on there so it's like his style is it's yeah it's power chords it's rhythm but there's also all these notes and little riffy things he throws in in between so it's like he's playing two different roles at the same time which i always thought was brilliant um to him claudio from coheed and cambria i always liked his style and then Matthew Bellamy from Muse I like how riffy and kind of you know like I don't know what the word is outside of riff but the like the rhythmic patterns of their music it's just kind of almost bluesy or but with a rock vibe to it so Honestly, a lot of his, my favorite guitar work that he does is not even in the song. If you've ever seen Muse live, oftentimes in between songs, he'll just randomly just start playing some kind of riff and they'll just jam for a second. And it's always just some cool, like fist pumping thing. I do, I do want to throw in just as like a, I forgot, um, the guitarist for System of a Down and the guitarist for Creed. Those were two big ones too. Oh, yeah. down one. Yeah. Yeah. They were supposed to be getting back together and touring if COVID didn't happen. I heard they released new music, but I didn't. I think they did to. too. Yeah. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. So shout out um, to Drip Davis on YouTube. Uh, I wanted to stay and watch the stream longer, but my girlfriend wants to play Dead by Daylight. So good for you. Uh, <laughs> um, also we're getting a lot of love on YouTube, um, from dragon force, 
um robert johnson um i quite like james eha first solo album i don't know if i'm familiar with his solo album but that's really cool um so we're getting a lot of shout outs on there um happy 42nd birthday to todd happy birthday woo <laughs> Uh, Sebastian says that how I talk about writing the songs is kind of how he approaches making a dinner special on the weekend. <laughs> I it's love that. Man. That's cool. Yeah, like get some ingredients and then build it all around that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I definitely think there's parallels between like cooking and music, any kind of art, painting, anything. It's all about bringing like it together to form like a final you got the appetizer, you got the uh, main course, you got the dessert, you got proper. Uh, so wait, out of us four, who's the appetizer? Who's the main course? Who's the <laughs> dessert? And then who is, I don't know. Josh is the cherry on top for sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Josh is the whole meal. Uh, I'm the five course. <laughs> <laughs> DJ is the skinny There's only four of us. He's like just the the snack appetizer. I'm, I'm the fucking maitre d is what I am. The garnish, the little <laughs> piece of lettuce on the side. TJ is the, the kind of couch again. You're gonna like eat it and then be hungry like in 30 minutes. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. I'm I'm MSG. <laughs> <laughs> What does that even mean? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the pothead hour. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep tuning in or they're always talking about food. I know all this talk <laughs> about food's making me hungry, hungry and I'm definitely cooking breakfast tonight for dinner. <laughs> um, have you guys ever listened to Hurt or know anyone from the band? I, I'm not familiar with the band called Hurt. I'm not familiar with the song called Hurt. I yeah. hurt myself today. That's one of the few covers that I like better than the original. Uh, yeah. Johnny, well, it's Johnny. If Johnny Cash covers your song, you're fucked. Take that to the you're bank. Yeah. Holding on for life. <laughs> um, so, oh, I, I, that holding on for life that reminds me is that i i wanted to ask you three what is your favorite song that we have covered oh What's i'm that? gonna say i'm not okay oh yeah this is, this is such a fun song to play live yeah yeah i'd second that it's either that or jimmy world Ooh, yeah. just because jimmy world's cool yes, yeah. yeah those are fun i don't know i like Personally, I like holding on for life because it's the one that we like made our own. You know, it's like the other songs. I love those songs, but we're just playing it kind of note for note, like the original. And yeah, holding on yeah. for life, we really kind of made our own. Yeah, yeah, and that's my favorite thing about a cover is like taking the idea of it or the the core, but like giving it a makeover. You know. Do I don't guys, think we ever I don't think we ever got a chance to play that like live a lot like as much as played, the other ones. Yeah. Played we played Holding On for Life a few times. We played it in Murfreesboro at that high school thing. Um, Didn't we do it the whole last tour? Was it the Blame Ship tour or one of the tours we played it? Yeah. Or we played the Lady Gaga song. That was the Blame oh, Ship. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, and that I love, and I love if you guys go on YouTube, there's a holding um, the perfect illusion holding on for life is on YouTube as well. It's one of our top stream songs, actually. And I, I think forgot it's about that, yeah, huh? me too. About Lady Gaga, I like, but my favorite one, which none of you guys mentioned, was the offspring, The Kids Aren't All Right. Oh. And we played it one time, we learned it for yeah. got talent and they didn't even ask us to play it <laughs> mm. i remember figuring it out in that hotel room like just on acoustic guitars yeah. and just like yeah 
Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I was such an asshole to you guys. I was like, we need, we can learn this in a day. Like learn it now. <laughs> we're auditioning for America's Good Talent or whatever the fuck it was. And I was like, we need to learn the song and start playing it now because we're a band and we can do this. <laughs> uh, and then we ended up playing it in at the Cobra, Cobra in Nashville, in East Nashville, East Cobra. What the fuck is that place? Yeah, called? the Cobra. Anyway, that was like my, my favorite cover because the whole audience was singing along. But of course, every time we did Sweetness, everybody did the whoa. Like that was, that's awesome. And then we threw the, br the breakdown in at the end. And people oh, yeah. fucking loved it. Like, I just love it. And I think we just, our style really lends itself to the offspring. I love the vocal range is like very much in my vocal range. So we don't have to change and transpose a lot, which a lot of other songs we have to transpose because they're just too low for me as a female. Um, yeah. The offspring, I think is so underrated. Well, not underrated. Like they're obviously hugely popular, but I think people see them as like the goofy punk band. But if you look past <laughs> exactly why i'm saying like if you look past the lyrics, with them. they're like phenomenally talented as well like and i mean they've written so many hits so many hits yeah oh dan says tj is the main dish because of my killer voice and sebastian goes tj you salty <laughs> <laughs> I actually prefer pepper. Ask my fiance. I put pepper on everything. And he makes fun of me all the time. He's like, I can't taste it. I'm like, how can you not taste pepper? It's pepper. Yeah. Um, I like pepper. Also, <laughs> cool story, Josh. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Tyler says, "Who TJ, who are your vocal influences? Um. I have so many vocal influences. There's really not just one. Obviously when, okay, so let's start when I was younger, it was hundred percent Christina Aguilera and Whitney Houston. And as I got older, it turned into Brody doll. And honestly, um, my chemical romance, uh, Gerard way and, um, the used Burt McCracken. I mean, I know they're men, but like they sing in, in kind of a vocal range that's similar to mine. And those were some of my formative bands when I was like, I want to be in a band and I want to be in a band like that. I was definitely listening to a lot of the use and a lot of my chemical romance. I mean, who wasn't, you know, um, in the early two thousands, that's what we were all listening to. And, and as front people, they are a huge influence on my stage presence and everything. Cause I was like, well, I don't know how to be a front person. I'm a trained opera singer i'm a singer songwriter i had played um you know gigs behind you know just sitting behind the piano and it's like i didn't really know how to be a front person so i i would watch videos of gerard performing live and i obviously had seen them live as well um going to shows and stuff before well before we ever formed the nearly deads and was just like i want to do that so it's kind of weird like as women like there's not there's a finite amount of women that we have to look up to i mean you guys guitarist drummer everybody that you're mentioning is a man like for, you know, for females, it's like, obviously I look up to Brody and I look up to Shirley and garbage and garbage. I've listened to my entire life because they've been a band since, you know, the nineties. Um, but it's kind of tell, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Do you guys not think that's, do, is there any female guitarists or female drummers out there that really, um, <laughs> I think Steve is going to the bathroom. <laughs> Just well, yeah, there's a, there's a guitarist that's really cool. Um, she, I think right now she plays guitar for Alice Cooper. I forget her name. She's really good. Is it? Um, no, not Lita Ford. Obviously Lita Ford, but her, or Hurricane Nita. Anyway, go ahead. I think it, yeah, I think you're right. It's like Nita something, Nikki something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, Lizzie Hale's really really awesome she's like she's like this generation's i guess amy lee or yeah, something i would maybe joan jett i mean yeah maybe more yeah like probably amy lee. yeah i'm like um a, jen ledger is a really cool female drummer oh, from skillet, skillet right yeah, yeah. She's awesome yeah they're badass 
Yeah. I love that. See? Where the hell did Steve go? I can hear his toilet fucking flushing, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, shoot. Let's see. I met Gerard Way at 2001 Warped Tour. So lucky. That's awesome. Back to drummers. What's your opinion on the White Stripes? I love the drums in their songs. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, it works. I don't know. It's cool. I, I love just the four on the floor kind of just heavy hitting. Yeah. You know what's interesting about that? I think I was watching like some Jack White documentaries or whatever and i'm not like a huge white stripes fan but i think they're really cool and one of the things that stood out was when he was like okay so i know she can't really she's not a technical drummer and she can't really play like complex stuff he's like but that's okay like that's what this that's the kind of sound i want i don't want you to practice just play like you're gonna normally play and it it's it just kind of like stood out to me it's like you know I guess as a musician, you could overdo the practicing and like focus so hard on getting it right and miss out on like, you know, the, the, the emotion of it, I guess. Well, yeah, discover who you are as a musician rather than trying to be what someone else is. Like I had to learn that, you know, it's like I always, especially moving to Nashville, a city where, it's filled with like phenomenal musicians, like session people, like people that make me look like a child trying to play guitar in comparison, um, you know, and I'd practice and practice and practice because, you know, I wanted to be able to shred and do all these crazy things. But, you know, then I just kind of realized that it's like, you know, I can spend hours and hours and hours every day getting to that point, but I made never even reach that level of technicality and then at that point all for what like I could be just spending that time just trying to be creative and do something that like I'm inspired by or I feel like comes from the inside and so I'm now like less focused on like being a technical guitarist and more focused on just like being the Steve Yeah. I think uh, I think creativity, like learning learning that creativity takes precedence over any kind of like technical skill. Like if you're a creative guitarist, you don't have to be technical. Like if you're a creatist, if you're a creative, you know, sound engineer, like you don't have to be the best. But I think creativity is like super powerful. Well, here's the thing: oh, is for sure creativity cannot be taught but technical skill can right same yeah. thing when it comes to art same thing when it comes to cooking to kind of go back to our chef friend i i don't know there's certain instincts and stuff that you just have to trust and, and can't really be taught but like you can teach anybody how to be technically good at an instrument right yeah so like finding your own voice and all that is more important um so i'm going to take a crack at this polish name because I was challenged on YouTube. Um, I'm going to sleep, but if you want to take last crack on my nickname, try wi Wishtko Hendo. Wishtko Hendo. No, wish, uh, wish, no, Wishtko. <laughs> that to me, it looks like Wishto Hendo. So if that's if, wrong, whatever. And if if I'm, or the D comes before the N. Isn't, isn't, a, like is, isn't a W, isn't a W pronounced as like a V though over there? Not really in Polish, more in, oh. in German it is. Gotcha. Some of those have to be silent though. It may be like Heno or something. No, he said Hen, Hedno, Hedno, Hedno. Yeah, but I'm sure there's like some silent consonants. <laughs> oh, Hedno. And, oh, I said Hendo. I'm dyslexic. It's clearly had no. We'll see. We'll see if he commented on the end. Um, had no. Bella called me out for leaving the. <laughs> <laughs> what was Steve doing? You guys comment because now I'm going to leave. Um, uh, Lacuna Coils, Christina Scabia's badass vocalist. Yes. Yes. 
Um, Aretha Franklin, I love absolutely influential vocalist. Um, I also really like when it, since we're on Aretha Franklin, I love Etta James. Um, love Etta James. Um, let's see. Um, over on Twitch, Steve asked a good question for Steven. He said, he asked uh, a good question. He oh, said, okay. if, if you, you weren't playing music, music, what else would you be doing? All right. You guys answer that real quick and I'll be right back. Okay. 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 We'll take bathroom breaks. <laughs> I think, I think that's kind of a. Well, it's like dream I, job. I, if you're not, if you weren't pursuing music, like Javi, would you like want to be a fireman or like? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't. Honestly, I don't really see it that way anymore. I used to. Um, like, I'll, I'll answer it in two ways. So the first the way is like, if I, if I was not able to do music, I probably would go in like the video direction. Like I'd, I'd want to do something in video because I, I think I'm getting pretty decent at it. And then, but on the flip side, like as part two of that question is, or the answer to that question is like, you can do everything if you want to. So it's like, yeah, you can do music, but why can't you do music and video and See, music? I, I think you're overthinking it. You're getting too deep. I think he's just saying, other than music, just what would you want to do? Like, I think you're getting too philosophical on it. I think it's just like, what would be a fun career in your mind if you're not doing, if it wasn't music? Everything. So you said video, like, so video would be something you'd want to pursue. If... Yeah. Hot like video, cool. video needs music too, though. So it's like, it's kind of, that's what I was trying to get at. It's, it's kind of hard to escape music, no matter what I choose. So just being creative in general, really. Mm. Yeah, by the way, everybody watch, um, the army of a hundred sheep YouTube Javi filmed all his own music videos. He's doing really awesome. Steve's in it too. <laughs> <laughs> he got this shake kind of, mix. But oh. I wasn't invited. Oh, you were invited, Josh. <laughs> Josh, what's your non um, music? I'm going to say uh, I'd like to make, uh, you know, like drawing. I'd love to make like comic books, be a car. I wanted to be a cartoonist for a long time. That's like what I wanted to do prior to getting bit by the music bug. Um, <laughs> yeah. Or a firefighter. <laughs> so yeah, me and Josh are very similar <laughs> in that respect. Like, I guess if I wasn't going to do anything music related, um, when I was in high school, I was looking at colleges to get an art degree and I wanted to do concept art. So I wanted to draw, draw all the, like the ideas, storyboarding, draw the characters and, and ships and models of things before other people implement it into CG or, or whatever, or like film and video games and stuff like that. So but I gave art, I gave it up to do music. Yeah. Now, TJ's Your art is really good. Your TJ's killing it with art now. Like, like you have like a style. I just like copy shit. No, you have a good style too. Have you guys seen Steve's art, Javi, Josh? Have you seen like his drawings? Oh yeah, I've seen this. Well, we did the art of the month last year, but I don't know. I just feel like I look at things and then I just copy it. Like you've got like a style, like you're just like making stuff up out of your head and it's whimsical and creative. Well, I mean, that's definitely, I mean, I definitely do copy stuff. I mean, I definitely, am just like, I'm not, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate that, but I don't know. I feel like I definitely do like, I, to some extent, I don't know, but I, I don't even know. 
influence wise, you know, who does a lot of the, um, well, obviously like Tim Burton style. That's why I like, think I like whimsical. I like scribbly, um, to me when I, so what I'm finding out now as like an adult and you guys might feel the same way, the three of you, when you were a kid, some of the stuff that you like did not like about yourself now are becoming things that you're just like, wow, this makes me who I am. Cause when I was a kid, I used to like scribble in the margins. I used to do like lettering and like shit. And I always thought it looked awful. Right. But turns out like when you get older, you can be like, well, that's just my aesthetic. And all these like little scribblies that I used to do, I'm just like, actually people like it. Like, that's weird. Like you find like somebody who likes your art, like being a musician, being an artist, do what you, what's in your soul to put on the paper. Right. And there's probably somebody out there who is going to like it. Same thing with music. I, I don't know. Like I'm becoming more confident as an artist now that I'm older because I'm not concerned about, is it technically good? It kind of circles back to what Javi was talking about. Like, are you, if you're not technically trained, because back when I was in middle school and high school, I was told by my art teachers, oh, you need to do this and go to, you know, you're, you're talented. You're great. And I love painting. I've always loved painting, but that's one of my things that I kind of put on the back burner because I studied music in college and not art. I did not pursue that in a way. So I never really got like the technical aspects of it, which I definitely feel like I would be much better if I did, because with music, I have a formal technical background. So to do what we do, it's so easy to just pull from my archive of skills. Like with Josh, you have to learn your rudiments, but if you know that, then you can write any riff. You can play to any song. You can really be creative because you have the foundation. Yeah. I'm, I'm a proponent for formal education art or otherwise, because why not try to be the best at what you're already passionate about? So I will put that out there, um, for anybody out there considering, you know, get some less, get some private, even if it's just private guitar lessons online or go to your local music school, just get some, you know, just learn what you're playing and why, why you're doing it. I, I really, uh, I really love the way Bruce Lee approached his martial arts because, and this has to do with like what you're talking about. He, I think he once said somewhere where he was like, you know, learn everything that you can about every style of fighting and learn it, you know, front and back. And once you learn everything that there is to know, just forget about it, toss it out the window. And that, and the way that like, the way that that resonated with me is like, yeah, because once you have it, you know, toss it out the window and that frees you to be creative and like, and you already know it and, and you don't have to be relying on that or whatever. I love that. When I was in, when I was in college, my professors used to say, you need to learn the rules to break the rules. Right. Yep. That's cool. I like that. Um, okay. Dan asked, how do you deal with lyrics writer's block, TJ or Javi, or any of you guys? You guys all write lyrics. How do you guys deal with writer's block? I guess um, I'll go ahead. Oh, Josh, let's hear from Josh. <laughs> no, I get mad and walk Josh, away. <laughs> you get mad and walk away? Yeah. <laughs> and come back the next day. <laughs> how is that helpful to anybody? It's not. It's more of a joke. Give up. You go. Give up. I'm going to have a very you nice. Never be good enough. Give up now. <laughs> Isn't that the artist way, though? <laughs> you just. Elaborate. You you Elaborate it. on that, Josh. <laughs> oh. I mean, do you throw the pencil at the t at the piece of paper yeah, or do you like toss I, it against I, the wall? I throw it in the air. I was like, this is cool. This is just crap. <laughs> you eat it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, on a serious note though, it's funny though, because I do feel like there's a lot of times where I write something and really don't like it, but then go back to it like a couple months later, I'm just like, wow, this maybe has more potential than I thought kind of deal, you know? Um, so that's cool. Or even listening back on songs that you've done in the past or something, like rehearing it almost as a, a fan, not like you wrote it kind of by that time. That's how I always think of it. But because you can get into your head and overthink. Yeah. Um, 
at least, I mean, and I certainly do, you can overthink and keep fiddling. And this, this, I love that it's, it has parallels to art, um, painting, drawing or whatever. You're always fiddling. You're ever like never finished. Yeah. Um, they say that about a lot of the great painters about how they were like never finished. They were always trying to add this or that or the other. And I'm assuming when you're cooking or creating anything, you're probably always wanting to add that extra thing. You can't just let it be that, that that's the creative process. I think that's universal. And what I would say and add to what Josh was saying is that I record everything on voice memos and I have notebooks full of shit, Sh horrible, stupid, cliche, bad lyrics, every, just whatever comes to your mind. If you're out there trying to write, put it down, put pen to paper, get out your voice memos, record it because, you know, you could listen back on it and think, okay, that actually wasn't that bad. But when you're in the moment and in your head, you know, if you're not in the right mind space, you'd be like, well, everything suck, or I'm not done with tinkering with this and this has to be perfect. But when you listen back, I mean, I was thinking that way about like the lyrics to can't make you change. It's like, are these too basic? Are they too cliche? Are they, da, da, da. I, I, you're never going to not think that I think as an artist, it's never going to be like, that was exactly, I mean, maybe that was exactly what I wanted to say at that exact time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's easy to get in your head and like overanalyze it but I think it's just got to be whatever you feel. Cause I, you know, as much as I love like technically complex things or super deep lyrics that you kind of have to dig into the metaphors, like some of the catchiest, most memorable songs are just three or four words and the most basic ever, you know, but that's why they're so memorable. Cause it's not a science project. Uh, but, you know, I'm the same way in my notes on my phone. I've got tons of stuff on there. I've got tons of ideas on the uh, memos. One day we'll have to release if we uh, start a Patreon. I should like release a collection of all the nearly, I nearly dead's ideas that never got used. The nearly ideas. The nearly <laughs> 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 Um, I'm going to have a question from Ezra on YouTube, which I think is funny is, uh, what are your guilty pleasures, your music guilty pleasures? And let me preface this by, I love when Dave Grohl was like, guilty pleasures is bullshit. If you like it, you like it, you know? Yeah. So we don't have to have that guilty pleasure, um, preface to any of this, but I don't know. What do you guys kind of like that no one might think that you would like? I, I can definitely answer that. <laughs> I know what Josh is. He was smiling already. <laughs> How do you know? Javi's going to say Conway Twitty. Well, no. I, those are, that's, <laughs> that's music really that I like. Pleasure. That's that's, no. I'm going yeah. to think I know what you might say. Okay, what do you think I might say, Josh? Because I could say it too. Is that where your head's at? No, mine's that. different than yours, but I think I think I know what yours is. No, you just go ahead. You guys, wait, okay. I want to hear. I want to count to three, and out of the three, you say what you think Javi's going to say. Oh, I don't know, because I'm probably got it wrong then. All right, one, two, three. Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> I do like Kelly. You do Clarkson, like Kelly? No, that's 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 not it though. Yeah. Um, okay, so my guilty pleasure, quote unquote. I really like um, Selena Gomez, Dua Lipa, and Britney Spears, especially old school Britney Spears. Yeah. Like just the, I don't know, this is just maybe the music producer in me. It just, the tracks are just phenomenal. Like there's no getting around that. And so that's that's the stuff that I listen to that's like, you know, I mean, of course, I love my rock bands and stuff, but that's something that's like, I guess, would be outside of the box. Yeah. I like, I love Dua Lupa and I love Selena Gomez. Like, low key, her songs are incredible. The new yeah. I Need a Boyfriend song is just like my shit. It's like, unlike anything you've ever heard on the radio, she's phenomenally um, famous, you know, 
Yeah. The one I like is uh, Look at Her Now from Selena Gomez. Uh, 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 yeah. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> it, it, um, have you heard the song Boyfriend? I haven't. I probably need to check that out. It's I need a boyfriend. Da, 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 da. And it's just a bass line. Like the song is so odd. And you're just like, this is on the radio. Like what? Like this is not the traditional whatever. So, I mean, props to Selena Gomez. I'm she, she's not writing the music. You know what I mean? Like she's contributing, but you know, it's the producers and like, like a whole team. Of right. Producers. Right. A reality, which also is what I like about it. I think, which is, you're just like, wow, this is just creativity because pop music is so derivative and so cliche. And then you hear something like that. Like even um, the look at her now, you're just like, what? Nobody's doing that. There's no real chorus. There's no real melody. It's just like this. It's cool. I like her a lot. I dig that. So have you heard uh, New Rules by Dua Lipa? Yeah. Yeah. That's and I, I like Dua Lipa. And I like the song that's like, um, don't come out. Don't say yes. Uh, da then um, her newest single or whatever yeah 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 what's the name now i'm i'm drawing a blank but you know what i'm talking about don't start now or something like that shit don't start now. don't start now yeah yeah don't start now she in her music is very like the, she's doing studio 2054 she knows and her music is so disco influenced you can hear the disco influence in Dua Lipa's like records and shit and whoever's mm -hmm. engineering that, that is doing it. <sighs> and she's a great singer too so love it Josh who were you going to say um <laughs> I don't know I mean it's funny I do listen to a lot of like the top 40 stuff I might not know all their names but I like uh I like some of the music. I mean, it's not like, you know, I'm not going to knock it. If, if it's a good song, it's a good song. But I've listened to like, I don't know, like I like Carrie Underwood songs. I guess that could be considered a guilty pleasure. She got some good songs out there. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my pick, Carrie Underwood. <laughs> nice. My guilty pleasure, quote unquote. Hi. When she sings uh, Sunday Night Football, I'm just like, everyone out of the room. <laughs> She's singing. Yep. I love her. Yeah. Dig it. What about you, Steve? Guilty pleasures or uh, something you like that most people would not assume that you like? Um, I don't know. You all probably know because I bore you on tour with it. I, I don't know. Being in a rock band, I guess people automatically assume that I like upbeat and heavy stuff which I do but I do like a lot of slow jams and low-key like I like a lot of foreign artists like um like I said a lot of like kind of trip hop down tempo stuff like um Bjork, Massive Attack, Portishead, Royksop, um I like stuff like Cigaros and Devotchka and like just very slow but like melodic and vibey stuff that you know it's not like kind of stuff you can just like crank at a party or like a group of people and everybody's like typically down for it. Um, I also just growing up what got me into music was movie and video game soundtracks. I used to like sit in my room and draw while I had like, um, you know, the soundtrack from some game I was playing, whether it's like Zelda or like Star Wars or Indian Jones, like in the background while I just sit there and draw. So I still, sometimes if I'm like working on a project, um, like I love like James Newton Howard and I'll like put, um, you know, like the village soundtrack on or, um John Carpenter does his own music so I listen to like his music and so it's all instrumental orchestrated stuff that some people would find boring I guess all right I thought I'm you were gonna, gonna I thought you were gonna say Vitus 
I can't say it's like if I only listen to one song of somebody, they can't be my you know guilty, guilty pleasure, yeah. I guess. Um, okay, so um I we've been we've been streaming for a while now, uh like two and a half hours. So I'm probably gonna wrap it up here pretty quickly. Um and I appreciate everybody who's watching everyone who's, I know people come and go from the stream. We still have a lot of comments going in. We appreciate you guys. Um, again, we were supposed to be celebrating the pre-order of our new single can't make you change. And the pre-order got messed up somehow. So I don't mean <laughs> to like keep rubbing that in, but anybody who's like tuning in, who's like, what's the pre-order thing? Um, don't worry about it. Just stream the song when it comes out. It's fine. We don't care. No one cares. Um, it's totally all fine. Um, <laughs> make sure that you check me out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Teresa Jean. If you want some custom artwork, make sure you uh, follow army of a hundred sheep for Javier's stuff. Um, make sure you're following Josh and Steve on Instagram. All of us, we have a new single coming out on the 27th on black Friday. And it's called can't make you change. And it's a song that we actually had sort of mostly recorded a couple years ago and then kind of revisited when, you know, uh, quarantine hit and we all wanted to start doing stuff again. We all kind of started reevaluating everything. Um, uh, I think we'll do more live streams in the future because I did want to dive deeper into can't make you change and all of that, but we'll probably do another live stream. Like maybe when the song comes out just to kind of celebrate, you know, people can actually purchase it, stream it, watch it on YouTube. So I think we'll do that in a couple of weeks. Um, we appreciate you guys. <laughs> we yeah, next time. Yeah. What? I think we were supposed to bring up the Patreon thing this time, but let's discuss it next time. Like, like see who's hiring. Would do a Kickstarter or a Patreon or anything like that? Like, what's your preference? Things like that. I didn't really, I mean, we had some great conversation though. I mean, I'm, I was loving every second of this. It was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of amazing questions. We're so glad that you guys are still out there, still listening to us. Some of you guys actually had no idea who we were tonight. So I appreciate you guys <laughs> hanging out with us. <laughs> um, let's see let's see i feel like there was more i was gonna say somebody said give us a preview does anybody have the song somewhere that they can like play a little bit of it i may i'm afraid to fuck up the stream so i'm not gonna pull it off my computer <laughs> <laughs> but I think we can take like one or two more questions and then we'll let you guys go and go to bed. I really appreciate you guys who are tuning in from, you know, Poland and London and all over the world. Cause I know the time difference is a lot. Turn it on. <laughs> Save some for later, Augustus. <laughs> What'd you say? I said save some for later, Augustus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Patty says he's still signing up for the TND Patreon. Um, I was supposed to do a fucking giveaway. How should I do this, guys? Just do it. How should I do a giveaway? Ooh, but uh funniest um, oh here well how many how many people win one okay not prices right everybody win. no price is right number between one and 50 the closest without going over wins a custom painting from me 
Yeah, so people the worst idea in the world. <laughs> put numbers in there. <laughs> Am I supposed to pick a number or are you picking a number on a random generator? No, they're they're picking the numbers. Like you no, you have the number in your head. And then whoever's Okay. I have my number. Yeah. One, between one so and whoever's closest without going over between one and fifty. That's who gets it. We could also get a hundred comments right now of numbers. Well, by the way, don't look at the comments and you can send us a private message in the chat and show us your number so we know it's you're not- It's too late for the private chat. <laughs> we already have like 40 people. Oh well, yeah. Did anyone get it? Just, just send to us your number so we know you're not cheating. Me? Me send yeah. me? Okay, this is my number. This, no, are you really going to get the private chat host and other guests? You all are not guests. No, I'm it's on, um, on Zoom. Zoom. On Zoom. Oh my God. Okay. I almost just ended the stream. I'm texting you. I'm texting you because this is not happening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. Where are the guys? Aren't you guys so proud of us? We made this work. Our first Zoom group like live stream thing yeah i had fun i could do this again maybe next year <laughs> next year this was really fun i dig it it's cool yeah. it's a good uh good workflow good uh environment welcoming everyone's sitting at home comfortable in their own the shit the best part was when yeah. Steve went to use the restroom. That was a really, that was a highlight of the evening. That was the highlight. <laughs> so let's go. Okay, I, one person so far. No, I, they got I, beat out. Somebody just got beat out. Yeah. What if multiple people pick okay, the I, exact I, number. Oh, that person just got beat out. <laughs> so right now. Okay, well, here's the other thing, too, is you only get to guess once, people who are throwing up multiple numbers. <laughs> One through 15. Um, also, see. I do want to give a shout out to Keelan Wendorf, um, Magic of Keelan. We love you so much. Um, I miss you playing tricks on me. <laughs> and staying with you outside of Chicago is always a great time. And if you guys have not seen Magic for Humans, it's such a great show. And Keelan, I see you doing something like that in your future. Please, please keep doing what you're doing because we love watching you do what you love to do. And I think you definitely have a good future in Magic. I am a, I'm a fan of Magic Tricks. Um, I love trying to figure them out. And I just wanted to give you a quick shout out to know that we, we have been reading your comments and everything. There's been a lot coming in, but. Uh, okay, so should we do like a countdown to give everybody another second to, who hasn't thrown their number in? Sure. Okay. I'm gonna put 30 seconds on my timer here. So if anybody hasn't put a number up yet, you got 30 seconds. Oh, listen, John Doe put the same number in all three chats because he really wants to win. I love that. And all right. Shout out to Morgan on YouTube. Uh, she is 3 a.m. where she is. So she is, or she or he is. Um, so have a great day slash night. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a fan of the, the gnarly beads. Thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> Are we doing last call? Last call for numbers. Yeah, I got three, two, one. All right. That's it. You're done. Um, so the, the winner, winner is, and here, here's how they're the winner. So the winner is Randy Levy. The uh, TJ's number was 22. Julie and Facebook got closer, but that was her second guess. You only get one guess. So, dude, you're such an asshole. You can't. Everybody else had one guess. Her first guess did not win. Uh, but Randy, his first guess was the closest to your number without going over. Seems right, fair. So, Congratulations. So Randy Levy, 
you got to get TJ your contact info somehow <laughs> in the chat here, or you can DM us on Instagram. Email us. Yeah, email us the nearly deads at Gmail. The nearly deads at Gmail. If, but if we put that in the chat, we're going to get tons of fucking spam from all these trolls. Uh, <laughs> That's already our spam email. Congratulations, Randy. Please email us the nearly dead at Gmail. Um, or I don't, can people send us messages on YouTube? Like if you send us a, a message on YouTube because you're a subscriber or if you are a subscriber, I don't know. We are figuring all of this technology out. Um, it is 2020. This is what we are doing. Uh, <laughs> this is how we're connecting with you guys. And I couldn't be happier. This has been a lot of fun because we truly miss playing shows live, meeting you guys in person and just connecting with you guys. We have been on hiatus, kind of on a break, if you will, for a while. Um, and so it's been a lot of fun just talking to you guys. Good times. Okay. Yeah, this was awesome. Um, so how do we end? How do we clo <laughs> close the show? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> um i'm i, I want to pick like one one question a lot uh, just a couple more shout outs thank you steven on twitch um sebastian thank you so much a lot of people giving us some love um oh god um linux archer 82 have a good night Paul, Kenya, Byroni, Carlos has been on the stream the entire effing time. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. <laughs> Damn. You yeah. were like my first person. Um, <laughs> and congratulations. Oh, look, Julie. I, now I feel like such a loser. Wait, was Julie the, the runner up? Steve. Steve. Yeah, she was the runner. <laughs> I will make a I will do a painting for you too, Julie. So send us your com contact information if you don't mind. So Julie and uh, who was the other winner? Richard. Randy. Randy. Yeah, Randy. Julie and Randy. Um so send, send us, if you guys can uh, PM us on YouTube or email us, the nearly deads at gmail.com. Congratulations. You guys have won a custom painting from me and I have a lot of fun doing these. And if anybody else out there wants a custom painting, I offer them on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Teresa Jean, T-H-E-R-E-S-A-J-E-A-N-E. If you guys know who we are, you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, same thing with the band. Um, guys, are you all excited for the song coming out? No. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to hear what uh, people, uh, like people's reaction and stuff. Definitely. Yeah, it's the first, it's like such a, a random, just kind of like put together song, like, the fact that it's even coming out as a miracle. Um, <laughs> totally. That, and it's the first song that like, I did all the programming. We didn't have like a producer doing that. So, <laughs> You know, what would be cool is if you use that song as like the intro to this show <laughs> as like just kind of a duct taped, put together, random, you know like that's what this show is like the right live stream the pothead stream or whatever the pothead room, <laughs> the pothead room. well anyways uh keelan pointed out early that earlier that i'm gonna go cook breakfast so that's what i'm gonna do because i'm hungry all right guys well i am going to i'm gonna go to bed I'm, well, let me, I'm gonna so near, nearly dads i'm gonna end the live stream but you guys hang out for like a couple more minutes okay yeah. Don't Talking. hang up on me. All right, everybody out there who's been watching, thank you so much. We love you guys. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for being fans of us for all these years. We recognize a lot of the names that we've been seeing. We see a lot of new faces. 
we couldn't keep doing what we're doing without you guys. So um, thank you all for your support. Make sure to check us out on all of our other socials. Follow us on Twitch, uh, the Nearly Dead's Live. And we just, we had a lot of fun talking to you guys tonight. We will do it again very soon. Um, now I have to figure out how to end this fucking thing. <laughs> just, just, turn, just turn your phone off. <laughs> on, it's on Zoom. Just do cancel live or whatever. Oh, okay. More. Stop live stream. Okay.